Will the meeting please come to order? Will all members of the council as well as the public please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by Councilmember DaCosta Hastings. Dear Lord, our God, God, we give you thanks and glory for all the things that you have done. God, we pray for our country. God, we pray for even the citizens of this country as we go through a detrimental period of death. God, we ask you to continue to cover us. God, bless all of our leaders, our mayor, our vice mayor, the leaders of the city, that we may be able to make the best decision that will be able to empower the people of this city. God, we ask you to continue to give us favor as we move forth in a new place, in a new new dispensation, a new area. God, that, that this city will, will grow for all people. God, we even pray for the ones that, that have places to live, and the ones that don't. God, we ask you to give us the insight as we can help all constituents and allow them to have a place to call home. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In your name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Without objection, we'll suspend the, I'm sorry. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? No, Mr. Vice Mayor, there are no messages from the mayor. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Uh, is there a motion for adoption of the uh, minutes of the meeting September 19th, 2017? Without objection, those minutes will stand approved as written. Is there a report from the Rules and Confirmations Committee? Councilor Haywood. Yes, uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. We have the Farmers Market Board and we have the appointment of Mr. Tandy Wilson for a term expiring May the 17th, 2017. Mr. Wilson will, fi uh, will fill the unexpired term of Mr. Tyler Brown. And at this time, there was a vote by the uh, Confirmations Committee and we voted seven, four, and zero against. And you've heard a motion to confirm Mr. Tandy Wilson to the Farmer's Market Board. It's been properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Councilor I Hayward. move to confirm. Uh, at this time, we have the Health and Educational Facilities Board, and we have several candidates. We have uh, Mr. Isaac Adai. We have Stephen Frozen. We have Sarah Hanna. Uh, we have Sean McGuire, Chris Moff, Blake Wilson. They were all interviewed and all are qualified to serve. Thank you. This is subject to an election of the council. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Jameson if he'll explain the process. Per the uh, original intent of Councilman Rosenberg, Rule 43 will require you to cast two votes because of the two seats that are vacant. Um, we're uh, going to be distributing written ballots so you can circle, not that anyone's handwriting can be a challenge to read, but you will circle your two votes. You will cast two votes on the first cast. Under the rules, if a member receives an excess of 21 and an additional person receives an excess of 21, the vote will be over. The two members will have been selected in first and second place if they both exceed 21. There are other exigencies that we can contemplate if necessary, but you'll be handed out written ballots. Upon circling them, the clerk will then ask you to verbally confirm the, the names that she reads back to you. Have they been distributed? I think they're being distributed now. While the votes are being distributed, 
council members don't get distracted, but um, I, I did want to acknowledge that we have two groups in the audience tonight. Um, I'm skipping around the agenda a little bit, I know. But uh, Troop 92 from Woodmont Christian Church is here for their citizenship in the community badge. Uh, honorably led, I believe, by Crockett Cooper, the son of Mr. Councilman John Cooper, and also by a group called F Futuro, which is uh, uh, primarily, I think, a, a Spanish-speaking Latino group from area colleges, uh, future leaders of our community, and Councilman Bednay and I had the opportunity to meet with him um, <clears throat> before our meeting. And before I do forget, we are, of course, joined by the new uh, District 31, uh, rep, sorry, 33 council member, uh, Antoinette Lee. Congratulations on your election. <laughs> if only you'd known what you were in for. <laughs> it is now too late. So just to, as a reminder, please circle two names on the ballot. Please circle two names on the ballot. Let's get them back in. So after Do they have to acknowledge? Yes. They say yes. No. I don't need to do mics, do they? Members of the council, as the clerk reads through the votes that have been cast, she'll call your name and state how the ballot is recorded for the record. Please acknowledge in a voice loud enough for the clerk to hear um, your response. These have been taken up in no particular order, so if you don't hear your name called, then please let us know at the end. Councilman Cooper, please confirm you've, you've cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Chris Moth. Erica Gilmore, you've cast a vote for Isaac Adai. Councilman Mendez, you've cast votes for Ms. Dr. Adai and Sarah Hanna. Council Lady Hurt, you cast votes for uh, Isaac Adai and Sarah Hanna. Count Councilman Shulman, you've cast votes for Sean McGuire and Chris Moth. Confirmed. Councilman Leonardo, you've cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Chris Moth. Correct. Councilman Hastings, you've cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Chris Moth. Council Lady Haywood, you've cast votes for Isaac Adai and Chris Moth. Councilman Withers, you've cast votes for Isaac Adai and Sarah Hanna. Councilman Anthony Davis, you've cast votes for Sean McGuire and Chris Moth. Yes. Council Lady Van Reese, you've cast votes for Isaac Adai and Sarah Hanna. 
Councilman Pridemore, you've cast votes for Isaac Adai and Sarah Hanna. Yes. Councilman Pardue, you've cast votes for Sean McGuire and Brian Wilson. Councilman Hager, you've cast votes for Isaac Adai and Sean McGuire. Right. Councilman Glover, you've cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Sean McGuire. Right. Council Lady Wayso, you've cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Sean McGuire. Councilman Roten, you've cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Chris Moth. Right. Councilman Syracuse, you've cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Chris Moth. Councilman Freeman, you've cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Chris Moth. Councilman Sledge, you've cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Sean McGuire. Right. Council Lady Allen, you've cast votes for Isaac Aday and Sarah Hanna. Councilman O'Connell, you've cast votes for Isaac Aday and Sarah Hanna. Hang on, what was that? Can you repeat that? Councilman O'Connell cast votes for Isaac Aday and Sarah Hanna. Okay. Council Lady Roberts, you cast votes for Isaac Aday and Chris Moth. Councilman Kendall, you cast votes for Isaac Aday, Adai, and Chris Moth. Council Lady Wiener, you cast votes for Isaac Adai and Chris Moth. Council Lady Mina Johnson, you cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Sean McGuire. Council Lady Murphy, you cast votes for Sarah Hanna and Brian Wilson. Councilman Pooley, you cast votes for Sean McGuire and Chris Moth. Councilman Elrod, you cast votes for Isaac Adai and Chris Moth. Council Lady Blaylock, you cast votes for Sean McGuire and Chris Moth. Council Lady Vircher, you cast votes for Isaac Adai and Sarah Hanna. Council Lady Karen Johnson, you cast votes for Isaac Adai and Sean McGuire. Councilman Bedna, you cast votes for Isaac Adai and Chris Moth. Council Lady Dow, you cast votes for Isaac Adai and Chris Moth. Council Lady Lee, you cast votes for Isaac Adai and Sarah Hanna. Council Lady Henderson, you cast votes for Stephen Frozen and Chris Moth. Councilman Rosenberg, you cast votes for Isaac Adai and Chris Moth. Councilman Scott Davis, you cast votes for Isaac Adai and Sean McGuire.
comments to everyone at the clerk to Mr. Vice Mayor, the results of the election are 21 votes for Isaac Adai, one vote for Stephen Frozen, 20 votes for Sarah Hanna, 12 votes for Sean McGuire, 19 votes for Chris Moth, two votes for Blake Wilson. Con pursuant to the rule, congratulations, Mr. Isaac Adai. We will then have a runoff or a second round with all the remaining candidates uh, available to vote in, or to be uh, receive votes in the second round, but congratulations, Mr. Adai. We will be able to do the second round on the on the machine, so it should be a little bit faster. Apologies to the members of the audience. We're utilizing a new understanding of this rule and may need to change that rule. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just very quick. So everyone is back on the ballot, not just the top Correct. vote getters. This Correct. Time. Okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood that. Thank you. He can't win twice. Please register your vote. Machines are open. Councilman Rosemar. Have you voted? <laughs> Councilor Ely. Madam Clerk, if you close the machine and tally the vote. Frozen, 16 votes for Sarah Hanna, two votes for Sean McGuire, 19 votes for Chris Moth, one vote for Blake Wilson. Congratulations, Mr. Moth. Before we go on to a few um, council elections, I do want to try and get a couple people out of here. Oh, hold on, Mr. Wilson, you're not free to go yet.
So, council members, let's move back to our seats. We're, we're lagging here. We would like to recognize those citizens who were confirmed tonight. Um, obviously, Mr. Moth and Mr. Adai have been confirmed to the Health and Education Facilities Board. Congratulations. In addition, uh, I'd like to personally congratulate uh, Mr. Tandy Wilson for his willingness to serve on the Farmer's Market Board. For those of you who don't know, uh, Mr. Wilson's ancestor sat in this room, uh, suffered through meetings, I believe, in the past. Um, so he has got a strong connection and commitment to this for which we thank him tonight. So on behalf of the Metro Council and the citizens of Nashville, we thank you, Mr. Wilson, you, Mr. Adai, and Mr. Moth, for your willingness to serve. Thank you very much. We do have three council elections or um, spots to fill. Um, all three of them, uh, I believe, are essentially unopposed, but I'd ask for a report from the Rules Committee. Thank you, Vice Mayor. For the Audit Committee, we have Councilman Mendez and Councilman Cooper that are all qualified to serve. For the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee, we have Councilman Bettney, which is qualified to serve. Then for the Traffic, Parking, and Transportation Committee, we have Councilman Hager, which has been deemed qualified to serve. Thank you, Councilor. If you would move for um uh, approval by acclamation of those um, appointments. I think we can take them all together without objection. Okay, I would like to uh, move for approval by acclamation of the four mentioned council people. Without uh, objection, uh, Councilman Cooper and Councilman Mendez are uh, approved to the Audit Committee. Um, Councilman Fa Fabian Bedney is approved to the Planning, Zoning, and Historical Committee, and Councilman Larry Hager is approved to the Traffic, Parking, and Transportation Committee. Uh, without objection, uh, they are approved by acclamation. Let's move on to some business. That brings us to bills on public hearing. Bill 2017-819, Councilman Kendall, Council, Council Lady Allen, approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0, changes 0.49 acres from ORI to SP for properties located at 109, 111, and 113 29th Avenue North to permit a hotel. Councilman Kendall. Call for public hearing, please. All those in favor of Bill 2017-819, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Okay. Those in favor, please come forward to speak. Uh, I'd ask you to line up closely uh, at the microphone, state your name and address, and each person uh, speaking on each side would be, is given three minutes to speak. No necessity of using all three minutes. If you feel like you're being repetitive, um, just know that we are paying close attention. Evening, Council. Um, Roshan Patel, 4156 Outer Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. I am uh, owner of the project uh, described um, earlier. Uh, I think everybody, all the councilmen, uh, all the council members should have uh, a copy of this letter um, that was just recently placed on your desk. So um, you have all the information I'm going to read out, um, but I'll quickly go through this. Um, before, before you tonight um, is a request to approve SB zoning for our project, a new hotel located in Councilman Kendall's 
uh, district. <clears throat> With Councilman Kendall's leadership, significant efforts have been made by our team to answer questions and to meet and address the concerns of the neighbors and the community surrounding the proposed project area. The proposed project has evolved during the planning and approval process, multiple community meetings, and through the assistance of Councilman Edward Kendall. A brief description of the compromises that were struck is below for your review. The spirit of compromise has been dem demonstrated in several areas of the project design, uh, and, this, and despite the significant costs that some of these compromises entail for our project, uh, we, were, uh, we still agreed um, in doing so. I won't go through each and every one of the bullet points down there. You can read for yourself, but some of the highlights of where we came from um, through DRC, through planning, um, and then now here at, at, the, at the council. Um, originally, um, through the DRC and the planning, um, we had went for 130-foot uh, modification, um, was requested, um, and it was approved with parking above ground and a parking count of 127. Um, and then you'll see through the dates from April, May, July, August, and so forth, um, all of the, the compromises we gave. Uh, we ended up taking all of the parking underground, four stories, which costs an additional $2 million uh, to our budget um, at the request of, of the neighbors and, and, and Councilman Kindle um, in order to, um, to show some compromise. Uh, the FAR, which was approved through the Planning Commission, was at five. Um, the neighbors didn't want the bulk of the building that big, so we went back and were able to finally compromise at a bulk of four, uh, which um, is n definitely necessarily in that in that in that area of West End Avenue uh, with intense development um, that belongs there. Uh, like I said, originally the parking um, was above ground. Obviously, that's a cost-effective for us, uh, but it increases the height of the building. Uh, the neighbors um, didn't like that, so we compromised and uh, we went underground. And we actually added spaces. We added from 127 spaces to 155 spaces of parking and also offered uh, uh, paid parking for any of the, um, the, the neighbors around um, and their family members or guests um, uh, to park in our garage. Uh, we also compromised on the construction um, to where um, the workers won't park anywhere near uh, the site. They'll be shuttled. Uh, from one of our other sites um, in the downtown area um, to the site every morning. Um, then once our parking garage is constructed, um, they'd be there. But um, I'd like to thank the Planning Commission and, and Councilman Kindle especially um, for helping us through this process and uh, getting our compromises together. Thank, thank, you, thank you, sir. Seeing no one else in favor, were those in opposition, please line up to speak. Again, you get three minutes. Please state your name and address. And I don't need three minutes. My name is John Johnson. I live at 3000 Poston Avenue, a block and a half from this proposed location. I oppose this project. It's the wrong location on narrow streets. It's not on West End. We don't need to be granting exceptions in a residential and small office location. The density already is too great. We do not need the additional density. Traffic, safety, and parking, as well as noise, will be permanent additions to the area, which will not be welcome. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Hello, I'm Jeannie Heron at 207 29th Avenue North. I'm asking that you deny rezoning the point 49 acreage, less than a half of an acre, to SP for use as a Fairfield Inn and Suites at the southwest corner of Poston and 29th Avenue North. This very small lot, less than one half of an acre, is located at the intersection of two very small side streets, an intersection used by the residents, many of which are disabled from the Parthenon Towers to get to their grocery store. All of the residents and businesses have honored the existing building codes. We have either built or bought based on the existing zoning. We simply request that all persons build according to the existing zoning. 
there's no beneficial reason for the neighborhood to abandon the existing guidelines and allow a massive hotel to be built on a very small lot. Hotels should be built in prominent locations, not in the middle of a neighborhood. As lawmakers, you know the value of obeying the laws. If this zoning is not honored, what else will not be honored? I don't think anyone here would vote in favor of a hotel being built in his or her neighborhood. Please deny the building of the Fairfield Inn and Suites at the corner of 29th and Poston. Thank you. Uh, my name is Megan Cohane at 117 30th Avenue. I'm reading a letter for another um, person from that building. Uh, he writes, my wife and I purchased condo unit 602 in West End Lofts 2, located at 117 30th Avenue North, three years ago, with the full anticipation of moving to Nashville to spend time with our three grandchildren after I retired. That time has arrived and we are now in the process of selling our home in Renton, Washington, with an expected closing date of October 16th. Assuming all goes as planned, we will be making Nashville home by mid-October. We selected West End Lofts 2 for a variety of reasons, including nearby restaurants, grocery stores, pharmacies, and shopping that are all within easy walking distance. We also selected West End Lofts 2 because the zoning regulations limited development in the neighborhood to office and residential uses with appropriate limitations on building size, something we considered an important factor to maintain the value of our property. We are adamantly opposed to the construction of a very large hotel at the intersection of Poston Avenue and 20th, 29th Avenue North. It is in direct conflict with the zoning regulations adopted by the Metro Council just a few years ago and will lead to the reduction of value of not only our property but our neighbors as well. I'm sure I don't need to remind you that maintaining property values is a key purpose of Metro zoning ordinance. I attended the hearing held by the Planning Commission last April and was more than a little disappointed to hear the planning staff tell the Commission that the proposed hotel meets the use standards it does not and that it complies with the size and height limitations again it does not and that will that it will not aggravate traffic problems in the neighborhood which it definitely will particularly on weekends and holidays when Centennial Park is crammed with visitors that is something the traffic study completely ignored I spent nearly half of my 45-year professional career working as a public servant for government agencies. I was always of the opinion that it was my duty to uphold and administer the rules and regulations of the agency, not undermine them. To watch and listen to the Planning Commission staff actively support this project was both baffling and troubling. They acted as an advocate for the developer, not as public servants whose role it is to point out to the Commission the inconsistencies between the proposed project and the zoning restrictions that are in effect. While we intend to move to Nashville next month, how long we remain as residents may well be decided by your actions on October 3rd. Um, just for myself and not um, the neighbor, it's, uh, it's less than a half acre, as the previous speaker said. Um, it's a very small area. They are right now planning on 90-foot buildings, so I figure about nine stories, eight stories of which would be hotel rooms. They want to have 155 rooms in this hotel. Um, I'm having a hard time just myself imagining how it's all going to fit, um, how all of those rooms are going to fit on that small lot. Um, we had been hoping for plans or something concrete that would show us what it was going to look like. And I just wish we had something that actually put it into a, a reality before any voting was going to happen on it so we understood exactly what it is we were talking about. <laughs> Uh, Johanna Cohane, 117 30th Avenue. Um, before I really start, um, my mom spoke at the last meeting when this came up and it was implied that the residents were just concerned about their view. I took pictures and I'd like to enter them to the record to show there is no view that this is not about a view, it's about safety and a community. Um, you can't see downtown, you can't see the Parthenon. So I have pictures to enter for the record of that. I've got three points, first on compromise. Um, our real wish would be no hotel, um, obviously, but if we're gonna have a hotel, we would at least like it to follow the existing zoning and UDO. Um, it's gone from one compromise was stated to be 130 feet to 90 feet, and the far going from five to four. 
um, that's bringing the hotel closer to acceptable uh, original standards. Those compromises are only possible because exceptions were being made earlier in planning commission meetings. Um, also, the parking. Um, originally, it was 127 spots. Now it's 155 spots. That can be seen as a compromise or it can be seen as good business. If you use an 85% fill rate for the hotel, 155 spots gives room for 85% full and their workers. Um, that's not really a compromise, that's more of good business, making sure that the people in the hotel have some place to park. If you wanna add public parking um, or pay parking, you may actually need more spots or else your hotel guests won't have spots. Um, the real concern here though is safety. This is not a large road, it's a small intersection in a residential neighborhood. Um, and now talking about hotel, you're gonna be adding unfamiliar drivers to a intersection that has had troubles in the past. Again, last time we were here discussing this issue, my mom spoke and she's talked about her fears of someone being hit by a car. She almost was hit by a car at that intersection. And I just want to stress that she was talking from experience. My family knows what it's like to be sitting in a surgical waiting room, waiting for news on a family member who's in an eight hour emergency surgery after being hit by a car. We know what it's like to try and plan a Thanksgiving dinner in the hospital because that family member may not be out in time. We know what it's like to see her go through six surgeries and a year and a half of physical therapy. And I don't think it's worth that potentially happening to another family for a hotel. That intersection is not meant for that kind of traffic. It will add traffic and Uber and cabs count as traffic. Um, and my last point is about the community. When a new business is offered, you wonder what does it do for a community? Does this hotel add to the neighborhood? It doesn't. It's going to add people who have no ties and no ownership to that area. They won't care for it like residents do. Let's be honest about Nashville. It has a reputation as being a bit of a party city. Those people that are coming to go to that hotel, some of them will be business people and most of them will be looking to party in a residential neighborhood with a park and a playground where children play and lie down on the lawn in front of the Parthenon. This is not downtown. That's where you need hotels. Mr. Patel has even said that downtown has a shortage of hotels. At the end of the day, when the developer and the hotel guests have gone home, the residents, your constituents, are gonna be the ones left with your decisions. Hi, I'm Julie Bianchi, 117 30th Avenue North. Uh, we retired to Nashville three years ago and picked this lovely neighborhood because we liked it. It was a neighborhood. You can walk your dog, you can stroll around, and it's a nice mixture of houses and low-rise sort of condo buildings. Um, my concern, because I've worked as a theater designer and I know how to read plans. I haven't seen any plans for this hotel. And so I went around and I took pictures of the vicinity to, and I don't know how to enter this in, but I made 10 copies until my computer ran out of ink. Uh, but one thing that to me, it looks as if the ratio on the estimated area being used to this half acre doesn't accommodate any green space. All of the, all of the buildings in the area, even the, the tall Parthenon towers, it has, an acre of land around it. That, sh the, that building doesn't even cast a shadow on the street because it has so much green space around it. And all of the other buildings too have nice uh, planted areas that sort of correspond proportionally with the size of the building. And because we can't see the plans yet, we don't know what we're signing up for. If we're signing up for a building, I was just in Manhattan last weekend and walking in those dark canyon corridors and I don't think that's what we want in our community. That's not what I bought when I bought this place thinking, oh, a nice neighborhood that I can retire in. Thank you. Hi, I'm Robert Talese, uh, 117 30th Avenue North, and I'll be very brief. Um, Mr. Patel, in um, uh, describing his um, support for the plan, kept using the word compromise, and that's a distortion. It's not a compromise with somebody who's insisting that the rules be enforced. The neighborhood has not been asking for demands from the developer. The neighborhood has been asking for a rationale uh, for departing from the rules that other builders and other people moving into the neighborhood have had to respect and thought were in place when we decided to move there. It's not a compromise to ask a developer to um, uh, amend the plan for a new hotel so that it's in accordance with the rules that we've all respected. 
that's just insisting on the rules. It's not um, holding hostage or entering into a negotiation. So far, there's been no rationale that I've heard and I've asked for why this amendment ought uh, to be um, accommodated. Other than that, somebody wants to acquire the, the, the land and build on it. It seems to me that if we're going to depart from rules, you need a rationale. And the rationale can't just be somebody wants the departure. Otherwise, that means that the rules uh, apply only to the people who can't afford to circumvent them. Thank you. Hello, um, distinguished councilman and professor, whoops, professor, I call everybody professor, okay, councilman Kindle. Um, uh, I want to, to address to a certain, uh, I want to start by addressing the question or the issue of the petitions and letters. Uh, in fact, a total of 70 letters and uh, signatures have been sent to council members. So it's taken us a while to get organized, right? One person started this opposition to the hotel herself. Many of us are unknowledgeable about this. You get some letter from Metro Council, what does it mean? I don't know. There's something about a UDO, UDO. I don't know about it. And I'm a professor of economics, but I don't do urban. Maybe if I did, I wouldn't have known about it. But the people in our uh, buildings, the people around, many are elderly and disabled, even some people in 11730th Avenue North, where I live. Uh, some of them cannot get out. They simply cannot get out, okay. Uh, and the people in the Parthenon Towers, I meet them on 29th Avenue and I talk to them and say, what do you think, there's a hotel going up there and they think it's strange. They think it's an odd place to put a hotel. Um, but uh, I didn't ask them to sign anything because I understand that they're reluctant to create any waves. But still, I think they're a part of our population and a part of our population that we should care about. Let me tell you, I digress a moment, and tell you that I raised this at a meeting with Mr. Patel and, and some of his team and some of the people from the area, and they sent out minutes of the meeting and they never mentioned they never mentioned the problems that we saw. They never mentioned the problems of the traffic, the elderly, the people in wheelchairs, the blind, okay, that are in our neighborhood. Uh, we, those of us who live there can understand what the situation is like, but new people coming in and uh, won't, people in a hotel. Um, so a lot, but many people, and, oh, and many people are also oversubscribed professional people. Um, now that we've started to organize, well, firstly, we got these 70 letters and p petitions, and now that we've started to organize, I have no doubt that if we have to come here again, we can come with 100 people against the hotel. I don't think there's anybody in the neighborhood who wants the hotel. Anybody. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Yes, we want you to demonstrate that the people of Nashville, and in particular the people of our community, are, are empowered, that our voices count. Um, yes, now, I want to say that I'm going to read a bit from Randy Durham's letter. He's the uh, person who opposed, uh, one person who wrote a letter to council opposing this, who I don't think has been able to come. They were hoping to but couldn't. So what he writes is that our o, the ORI district is designed to provoke ad, provide adequate and suitable space in appropriate locations for high intensity office use, mutually compatible with high density residential uses, mutually compatible. A selective list of, leaving out a little bit, users are permitted if the principal purpose is to serve the reoccurring needs of the occupants or employers of these permitted uses. Thank you, ma'am. No, right. I don't see any use, anybody saying we really need this hotel. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Kaz Kikawa, 117 30th Avenue North, Nashville. Um, here in opposition to this variance, <clears throat> I'll try not to repeat what's been said before, um, but I think one of the things that's fundamental to understanding why this variance from the urban design overlay is so inappropriate and why so many people here are upset about it, there are two things. One, you have to understand this is not 
This urban design overlay is not part of the West End corridor. It's two blocks off of West End. The urban design overlay was intended to protect that area as a residential area. And since the urban design overlay was enacted, that area has become only increasingly residential. There are more and more condos, apartments, buildings being built in that area. <clears throat> and most of the people who live in that area choose to live there because they want to be able to walk to all the restaurants and stuff on West End. So, you know, there, there's, a, there's a place <laughs> where a hotel of this size is appropriate. That may be the West End corridor, maybe other areas that are not specifically protected by, by an urban design overlay. And I think another thing to think about is the intent of the urban design overlay. When it was passed, I think only 10 years ago, the idea was to protect this neighborhood of homes and to protect a community, create a walking community. And if you, even if you don't read the urban design overlay that this council passed less than 12 years ago, if you just look at the pictures, none of the pictures include nine story buildings. It tries to create a common landscape of buildings that are maybe three to five stories in height in order to protect the community, to create a, a common streetscape to help bring some cohesiveness to the physical environment, which helps bring cohesiveness to a community. I agree with everything else that the other folks have said, and I hope you consider not just the, the location of the building, the appropriateness of it, but also the intent of the urban design overlay that this council passed only 12 years ago. Thanks. Ed Branding, 3106 Boulder Park Drive. Um, many of you are used to seeing me in your neighborhoods and neighborhood meetings because what I do for a living is try to find out what neighborhoods want and don't want. I'm often involved in advising developers and investors, but in this case I was asked by business and residents um, in the neighborhood to give them initially some guidance on parking during construction and then during the operation of the hotel. And the more that I got involved, the more I saw that um, uh, while this corridor may need hotels, it doesn't need it on 0 0.49 acres worth of land that is caddy corner to an MDHA property that is a block away from the crown jewel of the park system in this city and that is at the interstation of Dinky Street and Dinky Street, not to be too insulting, but they are small streets and this um, uh, type of property was never intended to be put on that uh, uh, size property. It's one thing to have a dentist office and a, a, a residence and whatnot. It's quite another to have a, a hotel that is beyond the ORI massing regs beyond the UDO. Why was the UDO put in place if it is going to be cast aside? So I would encourage you to think in terms of are there better places for it, uh, but this is, uh, uh, this is not the place. It might be appropriate a block away on a big honking street, but it is not appropriate in the neighborhood. So I would encourage you to um, uh, uh, not vote for this and see if there's another place where this can go that does uh, meet the desires and the needs of the neighborhood. Thank you. Hi, my name is Aaron Bishop. I also reside at 117 30th Avenue North. I'd just like to say a couple things. First, Councilman Kendall, I really would like to thank you for all of the time and attention that you've paid to this and for your patience in hearing about our concerns with respect to the hotel. And secondly, I would just like to echo um, many of my neighbors' objections and concerns about this as they relate to the safety, the size of the streets, the massive nature of this hotel given the relative size of the lot and the tremendous impact uh, and I think tremendous negative impact that it will have on the character of our neighborhood, which many of us uh, bought into early, have lent to the development of that character, and will really mourn uh, the loss of the character of that neighborhood that we see will be caused by bringing uh, this type of development to the neighborhood and the unfortunate precedent that it will likely set for that to continue. So with that, I, I urge you strongly to please deny the SP zoning at this location. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Bonnie Bielek, 205 31st Avenue North. Good to see you again. I just want to say I echo what my neighbors are saying. I think this is the wrong place for this, and please do not vote for this. Thank you. My name is Phil Fye. I live at 117 30th Avenue North. Um, I just wanted to express my firm opposition to this, uh, specifically related to traffic. I have personally stood on that corner and watched the tour bus go through where traffic actually had to back up so that cars could pass. I personally have pulled my rear view mirrors in um, on the sides of my car so that I can get past the traffic on these small streets. Um, I also want to anecdotally offer to you uh, the economic impact on the real estate uh, that this project is beginning to cause. My unit was on the market last April. It sat on the market without any viewings because of the controversy around this hotel project. I can assure you that if the hotel is built, that you'll see a whole litany of reappraisal requests going through the tax department because that's what's gonna happen to the real estate in that neighborhood. It's a small neighborhood that you all protected years ago with the UDO and I'd honor, really appreciate it if you just stick to what you've already adopted without any exceptions. Uh, I'm gonna stop us just for a second there, Mr. Henry. Uh, we certainly appreciate the passion, but we discourage applause just because it'll will end, to, will end up being in an applause war. Who can applaud the loudest? And that's not really gonna help us make a better decision. So thank you. But, but not the gong show. <clears throat> that's what we wanna avoid here. So uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of council, Sean Henry, 315 Dedrick Street, uh, here on behalf of several residents uh, nearby in opposition to this project. I have here 16 letters uh, and, a and there's also a petition of 58 signatures, I understand, uh, that's been filed here with, with the Metro Council. Uh, you keep hearing about the urban design overlay that was adopted for this area, and this property is squarely within that, albeit on the edge. This council must decide whether or not this hotel meets the criteria for putting this hotel at this location under the UDO, and there's really three. Uh, the scale and form of this hotel is supposed to create a sense of place. If you look at the design of this hotel, it creates a sheer wall at the corner of 29th and Poston. There's, there's no outward orientation at that corner. There's no activation of the pedestrian um, activity level at that sidewalk. It's a sheer wall, uh, a sharp corner edge, and it does nothing to create a sense of place. Number two, uh, under the UDO, this kind of thing is supposed to minimize the intrusion of the automobile. Clearly, a hotel that operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, is gonna have cars coming and going. My clients would prefer there be a, a residential building here or an office building here, uh, preferring peak hour traffic than 24 seven traffic throughout the, throughout the week. So we don't think that this hotel uh, qualifies for that uh, criteria. And importantly, the UDO specifically endorses office or residential development over a hotel use. Thirdly, sensitive open, open space relative to building mass. Uh, this is a massive building. The whole reason it's in front of you is to increase the FAR from 3.0 to either 4.0 or 4.25, wherever they end up. That's a substantial increase in the mass of the building, and there's no open space provided whatsoever. So I don't know how you can find that there's any open space that would, that would uh, satisfy criteria number three. Uh, I ask that you visit this site, drive out there to 29th and Post in any day, any time of the week, and experience that corner. Visit that site, take a look at it before you cast a final vote on this and decide for yourselves based on these, these three criteria whether or not this hotel meets, meets those. Uh, I see people here with stickers on them that says homes, not hotels. Uh, I'm not involved in that in any way, although I wish I had one of those stickers on my chest right now, because that's exactly what our clients are, are asking you to consider. Thank you. Seeing no one else in opposition, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Kendall. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, what I want to do tonight is move approval uh, tonight, but defer the third reading to the first meeting in November, if that's appropriate. And uh, I'd like to comment on that. First of all, I want to thank the people who came tonight. I've met with many of them on several occasions. I can say that uh, they have been very courteous. Uh, we have had discussions on negotiation of some of these items that are listed, such as the parking, 
the height of the building was one of the first concerns that we ran into because it, it, it did tend to block the view of some of the residents and that was a concern. But I would like to encourage the uh, people who spoke tonight who said that they were not familiar with some of the plans. Attached to this bill is a very detail uh, dealing with the FAR, with the height, with all those concerns that were raised. I heard some people mention the height as being nine stories uh, tonight. I believe it's seven stories. But at the same time, I just want you to take advantage of that. What I, the reason I want to defer to the first reading in uh, November, I want to have an opportunity to speak with the resident association there at Parthenon Towers. Now, I've heard a lot of people <clears throat> speak for them as it relates to the safety issue, which it appears that the safety issue is the one, the traffic issue and safety issue is the main concern that I'm hearing now from most people. And I think I heard that tonight, to be honest awesome. with you. So I would like to speak with them and get what their view is on this because as a standard um, sidewalk leading down to West End as a part of this project, would be expanded from five feet to eight feet, and I don't know whether they consider that a good thing or bad thing in terms of accessibility. And of course, I went out today and took my time and stood there and watched the light change and that kind of thing to try to see what was going on there at West End in terms of a safety issue. But I would like an opportunity to speak to the residents. I have not heard from them. I think they will talk to me. Uh, I know I heard one of the speakers say that they were hesitant but uh, these, are, these are people who are part of that community. I'm talking about the people at Parthenon Towers. So I'm asking to approve tonight, but defer third reading until the first meeting in November. There is a motion to adopt on second reading and defer third reading to the first meeting in November. It's properly seconded. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just want to offer just a quick comment because so many people come in here and spoke and procedurally I will support uh, Council Member uh, Kendall's uh, motion. But sometimes if we uh, support his motion, uh, people who took time and here, they may feel like their voice does not matter. Actually, it does matter. So before the third reading, uh, planning and zoning committee will uh, really weigh on their comment and so forth and uh, hear from our lead sponsor, uh, uh, Councilman Kendall, and then we will uh, make our decision and recommendation. So I just wanted to be sure, uh, I wanna thank our people who come here to took time and express their opinion and just wanted to be sure even though I will be uh, supporting, but it does not mean uh, their voice not hard. So just wanted to make sure. Thank you. No one else seeking recognition? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Let's go to the machines, Madam Clerk. I believe that's everyone, Madam Clerk. If you want to close, hold one moment. No. Motion carries. BL 2017-850, Councilman Sledge, approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10 and zero. Changes 1.73 acres from R6A to SP zoning for properties located at 530, 534, and 536 Southgate Avenue to permit up to 49 multifamily units. Councilman Sledge. I'm sorry. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Neighborhood and developers are still working on this. I need to defer to the first meeting in November, please. All right. The motion to defer to the first meeting in November is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-852, Council Lady Roberts, 
uh, approved by the Planning Commission, expands uh, 1,591.06 acres of the urban zoning overlay district for properties located between Cabot Drive and Bradley Parkway and from Knob Road to Annex Avenue. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Open the public hearing. I would like to open the public hearing. And all those in favor of BL 2017-852, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Council A. Roberts. Committee reports, please. Nope, not yet. Not till third reading. Just move approval. I'd like to move for approval, please. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You're, you're in a daze over there, I'm thinking. Just thinking about all 15. You wanted me to read all this, didn't you? Yeah, I'm not reading all that. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. For those members of the public, this includes hundreds and hundreds of parcels that somebody wanted me to read. Bill 2017-883, Council Lady Dowell, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. We can also take um, 884, which is next. Uh, change, but BL 2007-883 changes 8.15 acres from R10 to SP zoning for property located at 5400 Mount View Road to permit a mixed-use development. And BL 2017-884, Council Lady Dowell, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0, cancels 8.15 acres of a planned unit development located at 5400 Mount View Road. Council Lady Dowell. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. But all those in favor of BL 2017-883 uh, and 884, please raise your hands. All those opposed? Got a lot of people moving around there, so I'm going to ask you, Council Lady Dow, did you see anybody? No, I did not. All I right. think we declare, the declare the public hearing closed, Council Lady Dow. Thank you. I'm just going to move for approval. There's a motion to approve, BL 2017-883 and 884. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-885, Council Lady Van Rees, approved with, dis with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 51.89 acres from RS10 to SP zoning for properties located at 288, 292, and 296 Broadmoor Drive and 329, 341, and 349 Ben Allen Road to permit up to 321 multifamily residential units and a mixed-use development. Council Lady Van Rees. Please open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-885, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Those in favor, please come forward to speak. Again, if you'll line up close together, uh, state your name and address, uh, and uh, you're each entitled to three minutes to speak. Good evening, I'm Kim Hawkins with Hawkins Partners. Um, my address, 110 South 10th Street. I'm delighted to be here tonight uh, on behalf of Paro South for this development. Uh, this 53-acre development is actually one of the first that was a part of a trail-oriented development community policy in East Nashville. Of the 52 acres, one-third of it is designed as open space and is designed around a number of critical environmental features and includes about a three-quarter mile greenway, which will be dedicated um, as a part of the development in an area that is very much unserved right now by parks and greenways, in addition to additional sidewalks throughout the development and off-site. Um, the development does include 321 residential units. That includes five different housing types, as well as 63,000 square feet of mixed-use development, half of which includes uh, commercial development that is on the site right now. Uh, we really see this as a new model of development within Nashville that really does focus on trail-oriented development, one of the first projects of its type. And so uh, we really appreciate the efforts with um, our Council Lady Van Rees and four different community meetings that have been held over the last 13 months, as well as um, the overall support for the trail-oriented development community policy change that was passed in February. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Christian Paro at 626 Boscobel Street. 
East Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I'll be very brief, just kind of echo some of uh, Kim's remarks. Uh, I came into this project kind of by accident, and a lot of it uh, was inspired by my experience in the New York City Parks Department for six years. So we approached this project um, with an emphasis on public space. As uh, Kim said, uh, about a third of these 52 acres are going to be dedicated to uh, urban farming, parks, playgrounds, public space, and greenway. The greenway system will link three existing public schools, uh, Jerry Baxter, Maplewood, and Graymar. Um, and we also, before we even got the property under contract, spent two days flagging all of the mature trees on site. So that was everything 12 inches in diameter or greater, or anything that we thought could grow to a lovely specimen tree. And we actually planned the residential and commercial development around the swath of good tree growth and our ideal pathway for the greenway system. So that's where I'm approaching this project from, um, something to engage the community, not just the residents that live in it, but those that live around it. And I just want to state that for the record. Thank you. My name is Trey Calfee, um, 826 Breslin Road, Nashville. Um, <clears throat> I, I came in this property uh, per invitation of Chris, Christian and um, my interest in it was uh, not from a strongly financial standpoint, but the fact that it was talking about a unique development uh, that had a primary emphasis on sustainable design within a community and a large, uh, you know, a relatively large tract of land um, with such expansive growth and growth in Nashville as a whole. Um, uh, it was of real interest to me to see such intentionality associated with the development of, of a large community that specifically had an emphasis on um, really trying to be very proactive with uh, green space and then also just the elements of sustainable design uh, and the potential for this to be an example community um, for the region, the southeast region, as well as um, for future development in Nashville, just as something that's an alternative and really pushing us into the future as far as sustainability goes. Thank you. Seeing one, no one else in favor, those in opposition, please come forward. Good evening, my name is Terry Robertson and I live in the East Nashville area where this property is located. And I guess the question I have as a resident of this area is, why are you trying to overpopulate and overcrowd our area? There are three bills proposed tonight for public hearing, requesting a total of 656 units to be added, all within less than a three mile radius. We're looking at 1,300 to 2,000 more people in an already congested area. Plus, these properties are priced higher than the people who live there. Nashvilleans receive less pay than individuals who are relocating here. Residents within the East Nashville area already suffer displacement and find it difficult to find housing. In addition, Nashville sits in a bowl and the pollution is increasing as we're doing these redevelopments, as we're tearing down these areas. A doctor performing an operation succeeds not only by skill, but also by the sanitized instruments and tools used, the sanitized area, and by the supporting staff. Such is Nashville. We succeed only when you take care of all the people in Nashville. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Seeing no one else uh, in opposition, declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Van Rees. Thank you very much. I want to um, thank the opportunity to be able to hear from both the folks um, uh, investing and designing this area as well as um, uh, to uh, the, the woman who spoke on behalf of uh, everyone's desire to make sure that when development happens, it happens for us and not to us. And um, I believe that this particular development is something that um, I will be proud of in years to come, and I request your support. Is that a motion to approve? Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-886, Councilman Pulley. 
approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 1.54 acres from R10 and R15 to SP zoning for property located at 1811 Kimbark Drive to permit six multifamily units. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to open the public hearing. Would all those in favor of BL 2017 886 please raise your hands? Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, I, do, I, I don't think I saw somebody, somebody just bought a car back there, but uh, <laughs> Councilman Pulley, did you see only those in favor? I did not see any hands ar arise in opposition. All right. Seeing none in opposition, those in favor wish to speak, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Pulley. I would move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-887, Councilman Kendall, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0, changes 0.18 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 2717 Batavia Street. Councilman Kendall. Is that on public hearing? Open public hearing. All those, all those in favor of Bill 2017-887, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Kendall. Move approved. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 888, Council Lady Van Reese, approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 14.04 acres from RS10 and RS7.5 to SP zoning for property located at 2634 Bethwood Drive and Allen Wood Drive unnumbered to permit up to 75 uh, multifamily units and two single family units. Council Lady Van Reese. Open public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-888, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Those in favor, please come forward to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Roy Dale at Dallin Associates, 516 Heather Place, and I'm representing the applicant on this uh, proposal before the council. Um, we've worked uh, with the council member, Van Rees. Uh, she's a very diligent council member. She does her job very well. Uh, we've had, um, I think, adequate community meetings. This was a pr uh, presented to the Planning Commission. It was unanimously supported, and we'll put this in her good hands. Thank you. Seeing no one else in, in support, those in opposition, please come forward. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. This is the bill I really came for. Hello, I'm Terry Robertson, a resident of the Shepherdwood area and a native Nashvilleian. I and others in the neighborhood are against this development of 77 units. The major reasons are one, the increased congestion in people in traffic, two, the total number of units requested, along with the price and type of the units, three, the increased pollution caused by the removal of the trees and the vegetation, four, the ill-equipped current infrastructure to handle the electricity, water, and sewage needs, and five, the failure to meet the needs of the native Nashvilleians. This area utilizes one main road that connects to Trinity Lane. There are no stop signs here, no stop lights, and in an additional 150 to 250 people here would further add to the congestion in this area and the traffic. The 77 units plan consists of two single family and 75 townhouses. Our area consists of single family homes originally intended for first time homeowners. More single family homes and less townhomes would serve our better area better at a more reasonable and livable price. Tennessee's median home worth is $157,700, yet they price these at $200 to $250,000. Our area barely meets the median home price. The development area consists mainly of plants and trees. Again, as we said, this is adding to the pollution. We have the worst air quality and it manifests by the increasing number of allergy, asthmatic, and respiratory health issues in our area. We make ourselves sicker as we destroy Nashville, I'm sorry, destroy nature for development. Our current infrastructure and electricity, water, and sewage cannot support to, or address the people's needs. 
So much building occurs with an outdated system. Infrastructure failure is imminent. And lastly, the needs of the native Nashvillians. You plan for the people coming, but forget the people who live here. We are Na Nashville's truest treasure. You meet the income needs of new people, but fail to increase our standard of living. Tennessee ranks 11th as the highest poverty rate. As such, we cannot afford the new homes. We are ranked 16th as the highest population. We are growing. We are the new fad or trend that is occurring right now. What happens when this wears off? Because it will. We elected you to take care of our needs, yet are you listening to our voices and to our needs? Man's greatest fear is not evil. It is doing that which is good and right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Seeing no one else in opposition, declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Van Rees. Yes, I, I uh, again appreciate the comments of the uh, uh, constituent and uh, remind that this is actually another one of the trail oriented development projects and is adding green space and connecting the streets. And with that, I ask for your approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Bill 2017. Bill 2017-889, Councilman Pridemore, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 64.12 acres from RS40 to AR2A zoning for property located at 1890 Hudson Road and Hudson Road unnumbered and Manise Lane unnumbered. Councilman Pridemore. Thank you, my, um, Vice Mayor. Move to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of Bill 2017-889, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Can't imagine there being any opposed to that one, but seeing none opposed, those in favor wish to speak, De declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Pridemore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-890, Councilman Withers. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 1.52 acres from CS. OR20 and RM20 to SPMU zoning for properties located at 812, 814, 818, 820, 891, 895, and 899 South 6th Street. And to amend uh, the Casey Place specific plan to permit the addition of seven parcels with 119 multifamily uh, residential units to a current specific plan district. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of Bill 2017-890 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. The floor is yours. Um, just appreciate all my colleagues' ongoing work with the uh, Envision Casey plan that's been going on for many, many years. We do host very frequent uh, community meetings there in the community, and each and every one of you is always invited out to those to learn about how this exciting project is unfolding. Uh, this plan uh, basically uh, just adds some additional parcels that are sort of in the middle of that area that MDHA was recently able to acquire. And so we are excited to have that opportunity to start um, clearing some of those spaces and building some new housing right there. And uh, that will allow us to um, accelerate our process of building new housing and getting Casey residents into new housing without any displacement. And with that, I renew my motion to approve. And there's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-891, Councilman Scott Davis. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 6 and 1. Changes 8.44 acres from RS5 to SB zoning for property located at 1707, 1711, and 1801 Meridian Street. 13, I'm sorry, 315 Edith Avenue and Edith Avenue unnumbered, 1808 and 1810, 1810 Lishy Avenue to permit up to 158 multi-family residential units. Council Thank you, Davis. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-891, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Those in favor, please come forward. Those in favor are first, those opposed, second. Hello, my name is Randall Stroud. I live at 1410 Shelton Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee. And um, I've seen a lot of uh, hypocrisy on both sides of the aisle tonight. Uh, 50 years ago, Nashville, Tennessee 
looked like, I mean, I'm sorry, 50 years ago, Manhattan, New York, looked like how we look now. This is a political realism. This is uh, the consequence of a growing population, and a lot of people are complaining about we don't have enough jobs, we don't have enough income, but we have hotels that are coming in giving us jobs. We have a lot of things that are coming in to, to, to grow this economy, and we have to keep up with it. And if we can't keep up with it, then we're forced to relocate. This is uh, a consequence of the human existence. Uh, Missouri is still quite uh, struggling with their economy, and they have a very vast open land there that is very welcoming to people. And uh, it, it, we're almost like a muscle. If we can't keep up, if we can't adapt, then we will be forced out. And it is very unfortunate, but th this is the reality. This is political realism. I, I really uh, recommend everyone read uh, uh, Niccolo Machiavelli, The Prince. Uh, th th this is the way that the world works. I mean, today is uh, Christopher Columbus Day. A lot of people would like to call it Indigenous People's Day, but um, th they were conquered, and we're being conquered here today also. Uh, this is a very nice dog and pony show, but everyone already has their minds made up before anyone even speaks. But it does give us a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling that we are able to express ourselves and, and speak, and it is quite entertaining and fun. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council Representatives. My name is Greg Tidwell um, with Smith G Studio Architects. We're representing the applicant and the developer on this uh, exciting project. I uh, just wanted to say that we have gone through an extensive community process meeting with uh, the Highland Heights uh, Development Committee and the Highland Heights Neighborhood Group. We had very um, favorable meetings with the Highland Heights Neighborhood Group presenting the project to them and had very little uh, concerns expressed during that meeting and through planning commission. And I just wanted to explain a little bit about that process and that we have done, so to speak, our homework and meeting with the neighborhood organizations. I uh, also wanted to mention um, that there are aspects of this plan which um, are in keeping with the uh, Nashville Next vision for the growth of the city and that this plan, as far as the rezoning and the density and the building forms are concerned, meet the development pattern expressed in Nashville Next in the policy area. Thank you very much. Seeing no one else in favor, those in opposition, please come forward. If you'd like to speak. Good afternoon, honorable members of the council and Vice Mayor Briley. My name is Ashanti Davis. I live at 321 Edwin Street. I have lived there almost my entire life on Edwin Street. Um, the lot that I grew up on was in my family's in my family's holding for over four generations, and I'm really happy that I was able to buy a house, three houses up from my mom. Um, I'm not one of those people that are up here because I'm anti-development. This mobile home park has been there as long as I can remember, and it's deteriorated and it's in need of development. I will say, though, that we all have to balance the competing interest. That neighborhood is incredibly old with failing infrastructure, and the streets are very narrow. Both Edith and Edwin, you can take a regular tape measure that's 25 inches, and you could stand at one end and I could stand at the other, and it would cover it. That's how small these streets are. There's ditches on both sides of the streets, on both Edith and on Edwin, because we have a drainage problem. And all of these issues, I know some people think that development can fix those issues, but a piecemeal approach to development doesn't solve those issues. Additionally, I would like to point out that the neighborhood engagement was minimal. I have letters from my neighbors who I talked to, who I knocked on their doors in the sweltering heat to ask them how they felt about it. The meeting in front of the Highland Heights Neighborhoods Association was perfunctory at best. It was about five minutes, and the development committee until recently for the Highland Heights Neighborhood Association consists of two members. Such a small population doesn't represent a neighborhood consisting of 1,100 people. I also ask that as you think about this particular proposal, I would like to remind you to think about development in the aggregate. This particular area, as you know, I live in District 5, has gone through a lot of overhaul recently. And by my count in the last six months, there are over 800 units that have been proposed within a one-mile radius. That's a lot of development for this little area. And I just ask that we 
reach some sort of compromise where we address density, where we add density to the area, but we also try to maintain the character of the neighborhood. All these homes in this neighborhood are single family, small homes that working class to lower middle class families have lived in for over 70 years. And I'll reserve my time for the people behind me to speak. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of council. My name is Gordon Stacy Harmon. I reside at 1826 Joy Circle. Um, I understand we have a problem with housing. We need to have housing in the city to accommodate people that are moving to the city, but we really need to take a smart approach about it. And density, the, the density that's proposed for this particular project, as well as two others right near my home, have me greatly concerned. This particular project um, has a, a approximately 18 units per acre. Um, the project on East Trinity Lane, which is up for first reading tonight, that's number uh, BL 2017-918, has um, about 19 units per acre. Then there's a small project right around the corner for me that comes right up almost to the back of my house that has basically 17 units per acre. These are very, very small homes. We're talking 363 units that's proposed in these three different projects in about 135 acres in my neighborhood. That's less than a, than a quarter of a square mile. Density for this type of neighborhood, it can't support it. This type of density. The, the current zoning that you guys have in place for these properties is adequate. One to two homes per lot, certainly. Not 15 units in less than an acre. Uh, it, I, the impact to the infrastructure, like Ms. Davis was talking about, is going to be too great. The streets are very narrow. This particular project has a, a road that's being uh, proposed that will end where Joy Avenue, the street near mine, comes also, and there will be a four-way intersection. The amount of traffic that's proposed for that particular area will put an incredible strain on our neighborhood. Um, there are children that play in a park. Tom Joy Head Start is right there at that intersection as well. Parents come and pick up their kids. The amount of traffic from 158 units is, is going to be substantial. Add to that 190 units up the street, add to that 15 units, not even a third of a block away. It's just too much density for our particular neighborhood. Thank you very much. Anyone else? My name is Evelyn Henley. I live at 314 Edwin Street. I've lived there for 14 years. And all those apartments that they're talking about putting up are going to be right behind my house. And I don't want it there. And I agree with everything that uh, Ms. Davis said. Thank you. Seeing no one else in opposition, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. Thank you. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. Floor is yours. I want to thank my neighbors coming out in support and in opposition. Every voice has been heard. Um, this is the trailer park off of Meridian, really close to Training Lane, and it is right next to um, Edith and um, Edwin and some of the other streets and near Tom Joy. Now, on this property right now um, are over 50 trailers that are abandoned. This is the trailer park that was on the news for the abandonment, and also there were an additional 30 trailers dumped there after the May flood. Now, granted, I know we want the trailer park developed, and I know it's an eyesore, and everyone except for two individuals who, due to some other reasons, could not find another place to go. The relatives, not the relatives, the people have been placed in Shady Hills, which is a trailer park on the other side, Dickerson Road, which is still in the 5th District. And this will clean up a huge blight in my neighborhood. And it's got planning commission and staff support. And the uh, infrastructure with the sidewalks and the other drainage stuff will be needed on the, in the area. So I'm asking the council members, planning staff support, commission support, move for approval. Thank you. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Uh, one moment, one moment. Councilor Dow. I so are you moving to approve this? I thought he said he was going to defer this. I, I, what I heard from the people is that they are, um, they want the development to happen, but they want someone to address the density in conjunction with the other development in the area. Is that not something that you're looking to do before third reading? 
Uh, I'll come back to Councilman Davis here in a second. Yeah. I do want to, Madam Clerk, if you will um, please note Councilman Mendez as abstaining on this one. Councilman Davis. Now, as far as the density for this one, because of its affordability, um, Highland Heights neighbors, you know, at that meeting were in unanimous support. There were a couple of neighbors that had concerns about density, but the burden of that trailer park kind of, and comparing, you know, we are in talks about other and lower density of other units in future developments in the area, but we want this one to go ahead as, you know, the, hundred and, the 158 or 148 units as is now, but I will be entertaining amendments and you know, possibility to help improve infrastructure. So I'm gonna ask for approval for second reading. No deferral. Counseling down. So I, I just wanna make sure I understand this right. The concern that I have is that we look at projects individually and we do not look at projects in totality with other projects in the area. And that is something we've got to start doing. We've got to start looking globally at what's happening next door, across the street, and behind. Now, usually, Scott, I am Councilman Dave, excuse me, I am with you on most of the bills that you propose um, because I look at the area. But what I'm hearing from the people back here is that uh, you hosted a meeting. They said it was two people part of this neighborhood group. And uh, they feel like the due diligence have not been put in on this one. Um, I know some of the people and I've got some of the calls and I've also shared with them that typically you work things out with the district. So I'm hoping that if you move this forward in order to get my support on third reading, I would hope that you go back and have a conversation with them, specifically these people that stood up here tonight and said they have concerns and work with them and work something out. That, that was the commitment that I need to feel comfortable with uh, moving this forward. And with the planning commission, I understand how that works because they look at one project here and they say, well, it meets this plan and it's okay, but I am seeing a lot of uh, projects going in in the area. And um, I think this is a good piece of property personally to do something with and they agree with that I think is the concern with the multiple projects in the area. And that's what I would like to see that um, you have a conversation with them about before I vote for approval on third reading. I'll come back to you, Councilman, you're not. I will remind the members of the council that uh, regardless of uh, how you vote tonight, uh, if it passes tonight, it would be going to the Planning and Zoning Committee at the next meeting, and we'd have another opportunity to speak. But I'm not cutting anybody off. Councilman Hastings. All right, Mr. President, I just wanted to stand being a council person of the neighboring district, and actually, uh, Councilwoman uh, Van Reese and I were talking today about the Dickerson Pike Corridor. Uh, and we are neighboring districts with uh, Councilman Davis, there is an ample overflow of housing, of trader parks, and that, that uh, community has not seen the overall development that it needs. Uh, we want to put the right things in that community, but we have to start somewhere to make sure that our constituents have some place to go. And then also to work on uh, the drainage system. If it doesn't start directly with us with Metro, we can start and play a part a little bit of everywhere that we go. But I, I just wanted to stand to say I stand behind Councilman Davis in that move. And uh, I will, as your neighboring uh, councilman the District 2, uh, and uh, Van Reese and I, we will uh, be sure to get together to make sure that we make the best of uh, our communities. Thank you. Councilman Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to ask Councilman Davis when he brings it, because I know we're going to discuss it at the committee, uh, who, um, anyway, if you could let us know what component of the units are workforce or affordable, that'd be great. Thanks. Councilman Davis, do you have anything else? Well, Claire, the, the, the steering committee is made up of two people. The developer went, went in front of, I don't have the role, but I will get it went in front of over 30 neighbors to present. In Highland Heights, they go from the steering committee first, and then they go to a larger body. And they did that before they went to planning. And just to clear that up, Ms. Dow, so they did go in front of the neighbors as a large body. The steering committee. Okay. Councilman Davis. Is I apologize, Vice Mayor. Chair, please, thanks. I was just clarifying that there was more than two people at the Neighborhood Association meeting. I appreciate it. 
No one else seeking recognition. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-892, Councilman Kendall, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0, changes uh, from RS5 to R R6A zoning for property located at um, 10, 15, 44th Avenue North. Councilman Kendall. I would like to ask for public hearing, please. All those in favor of RS 2017-892, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Kendall. Move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2000, I'm, I'm sorry, BL 2017-894, Councilman Hastings. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.26 acres from MULA to SP zoning for property located at 1221 Brick Church Pike to permit all uses permitted by the MULA zoning district and an animal boarding facility and security residence. Councilman Hastings. Well, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We'd like to uh, open up the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-894, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Hastings. Yes, sir. We'd like to move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-895, Councilman Bednang. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 4.39 acres from AR2A to SP zoning for properties located at 6922 Nolensville Pike, Nolensville Pike unnumbered, and a portion of property located at 6444 Pettus Road to permit an assisted living facility. Councilman Bednay. Uh, thank you, I'm Vice Mayor. I move to open the public hearing. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-895, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Bednay. I'm asking for approval. There's please. a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-896, Council Lady Van Rees. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 18.20 acres from CS to, and RM2 to SP zoning for property located at 3711 Dickerson Pike to permit 260 multifamily residential units. Council Lady Van Rees. Please open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-896, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Those in favor, please come forward to speak. Please state your name and address. Mr. Chairman, members of the council, my name is Mac McDonald and I represent LDG development in their properties around the Nashville area. We're very happy that they have been able to uh, produce workforce and affordable housing in an area of uh, Trinity Lane. They're expanding their operations here. They're based in Louisville, Kentucky, and they've been very good to work with uh, in community meetings that I've been a part of, and we certainly appreciate uh, Council Lady Van Reese's support and advice and counsel. One of the things that we always look at in terms of these particular locations is how does it fit within the community? Is there community support? Uh, is there a design that would accommodate traffic, parking, congestion, access, accessibility to educational facilities, access to health facilities? We know that Nashville is growing north, and we are very much in favor of developing those corridors like Dickerson Pike and Trinity Lane that will support more housing opportunity. We know that a lot of these areas will support higher levels of use because of the presence of better sewers, better electricity, better transportation, and we want to encourage more activity, especially in the workforce housing area, and that's why I'm standing in support of this issue. Good evening, Council. It's Evan Holiday. I'm with LDG Development. Uh, so we've been 
coming down to Nashville for about six years now, uh, working with city uh, groups and city leaders uh, to try to solve a problem that we all know is very evident, uh, and that is creating workforce housing for members of our community that already live here. Uh, and so just about a year ago, a year and a few months ago, we uh, started construction on the paddock at Grandview on West Trinity Lane. And that's about the same time we actually met uh, Councilwoman Nancy Van Rees for the very first time uh, and brought to her our interest in this specific site along Dickerson Pike. Uh, now it is just north of the Walmart Supercenter, right off of Briley Parkway. Uh, it's right near TriStar uh, Skyline Hospital as well. And as Mac said earlier, what really brought us to this site was the, the future growth of Nashville North and also the need of that uh, density along the corridor while also respecting our neighbors and working with the community to help address uh, the, the groups living behind, the individuals and families living behind us uh, and keeping all of the, the buffers around us, all the trees, existing tree lines that are there, keeping those as well. And then we also met uh, with the neighboring church, Kemper Heights Church. Uh, it was Southeastern Sound and Patriot Irrigation and um, Landscaping. They're all our neighbors. Uh, so we met with each of those groups individually and they all uh, supported the development and saw this as a positive growth along Dickerson. Uh, and with that, I, that's all I have. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you, seeing no one else in favor, those in opposition, please come forward. I'm Terry Robertson, and I'm back again, and primarily ma because... Ma'am, ma I'm sorry. I'm going to stop you and ask you to do two things. Will you pull the mic down a little bit? Sure. And will you give us your address, please? Sure. I'm Terry Robertson, and I live at 2573 Slayton Drive in Nashville. I have been up here because all of these items relate to my area in totality. Uh, we are aware change is happening. We welcome change. It's not something that we can stop. But what we are asking is that we prepare and assist the people who are living there. There are people who are losing their homes. There are places that, um, that are not making affordable, livable conditions for everyone. And that's our major concerns. I've lived in your Boston. I've lived in Atlanta. So I know about big cities. I'm not against the change, but I am against when we don't include the people in this process and making sure that we're looking at them and caring for their needs as well. Nashville is growing. I'm happy for it. As I said, I'm a native Nashvillian. I've been here all my life. I've been to the public schools. And I've also worked outside of Nashville. But for us to continue to grow, to be the kind of Nashville that everybody needs, we need to take care and make sure that we're not overpopulating areas and that we're making sure that we're encouraging growth with the idea that we're not displacing others. And I appreciate your time and thank you so much. Thank you very much, ma'am. Seeing no one else in opposition, declare the public hearing closed. Councilor Lady Van Rees. Thank you very much. I will point out that this uh, apartment building is in Madison, Tennessee, uh, very near Old Hickory Boulevard, um, and uh, quite a distance away from Trinity. Um, it is 260 units of affordable apartments. Um, there, as you can see in the conditions on uh, this project, we'll actually be including a, uh, a new transit stop in addition. And uh, as uh, was previously mentioned, uh, the surrounding area and the two community meetings were 100% positive. And uh, this goes to the point that uh, Madison is a Yimby location. And I'm very, very proud of this project and ask for your approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Con Councilman Sledge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I wanted to speak briefly just because the folks who are doing this, who spoke in favor, they have come to the Housing Trust Fund Commission several times, which I sit on for the, to represent this body. Um, and as Councilor Van Rees uh, alluded to, this is, this is affordable housing. And this is what we're, we've been talking about and looking for. I'm very much in favor of this, and, and I hope that all our colleagues can support it. No one else seeking recognition? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
I'll be able to 1017897 Councilman Scott Davis referred to the Planning Commission changes 0 0.34 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 1001 West McKinney Avenue. Uh, Councilman Scott Davis. Um, we'd like to defer this one and definitely we're converting it to a DADU. So we're going to send it back to the plan. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Motion to defer indefinitely is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-897, approved by the Planning Commission, amends the Metro Code pertaining to electric fences. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of Bill 2017-898, please uh, raise your hands. Uh, those, I see it, one, all those opposed? Seeing none opposed, to those in favor wish to speak, declare the public hearing closed. Did I get that right, Planning Commission? I'm sorry, you wanna, there, there you go. Let's get the report from the Planning Commission fully. Yes, it was approved six nothing on September 28th. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Mayor. Move approval. There's a motion to approve, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. BL 2017-899, Council Lady Allen. Approved by the Planning Commission with amendment, um, amends the Metro Code pertaining to parking requirements for certain types of uses in elderly housing. Um, Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-899, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilor Lee Allen. Move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 900, Councilman Sledge. Uh, I believe it's been approved by the Planning Commission. We'll get that report. Amends the Metro Code related to commercial amusement inside and outside. Councilman Sledge, let's get the report from the Planning Table. Take it. Yes, it was approved 6 nothing on September 28th. Thank you. Councilman uh, Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I open the public hearing. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-900, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move approval with a very brief explanation. Uh, this came uh, as a request from the zoning administrator. All it does is it actually puts into the land use table the definition of an event space the zoning department has basically been getting a bunch of calls because there's no definition and they've been using as the commercial amusement definition. This is the hope that it will cut down on those questions to our beleaguered zoning staff. With that, I would request approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-901, Councilman Sledge, also approved by the Planning Commission, expands 6.07 acres from of the Belmont Hillsborough Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District to properties along Clayton Avenue and Gale Lane. Would, would, how, was that one approved on the 20-something as well? Yes, it was approved 6-0 on the 28th. Thank you. Councilman Sledge. I think it was Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-901, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed, Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to the consent agenda. <coughs> Following items are currently on the consent agenda. RS 2017 866 through 870, 884 through 888. 890 through 899 and 901 through 908, 906, I'm sorry. Is it Council Lady Wiener? We need to pull 906 because I'm withdrawing it. Okay. I'm sorry. It's a resolution. No, I'm sorry. That's not right. I looked at the wrong one. I apologize. You're pulling your bill on first reading? Yeah. Not your resolution. Yeah, exactly. Not resolution. Okay, thank you. 
Anyone else? All right. If you'll bear with me then, I'll read the consent agenda. RS 2017-866, O'Connell, Virtue, and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for the reimbursement of railroad crossing safety improvements at 14th Avenue North. RS 2017-867, Nina Johnson, Virtue, and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for the reimbursement of railroad crossing <laughs> safety improvements at Post Road. RS 2017-868, Sledge, Virtue, and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for the reimbursement of railroad crossing safety improvements at Sadler Avenue. RS 2017-869, Van Rees, Virtue, and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for, for the reimbursement of railroad crossing safety improvements at Nesbitt Lane. RS 2017-870, Freeman, Virtue, and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for the reimbursement of railroad crossing safety improvements on, at Old Glen Rose Avenue. RS 2017-884, O'Connell, Elrod, and Allen approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for the accept acceptance of traffic signal improvements near the intersection of Church and State Route 6. RS 2017-885, Allen and Elrod approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for the acceptance of traffic signal improvements in con connection with construction of an interchange at Hillsborough Road and I-440. RS 2017-886, Glover, Roten, and others approves an agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for traffic so signal improvements at the intersection of Old Hickory Boulevard and State Route 265. RS 2017-887, O'Connell, Elrod, and Allen authorizes Aiken Partners LLC to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 147 4th Avenue North. RS 2017-888, Virtue and Gilmore approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to promote and control uh, surveillance of uh, mosquito-borne diseases such as West Nile and Zika virus transmission in Tennessee. RS 2017-890, Allen and Gilmore approves a contract between the Board of Metro Board of Health and Vanderbilt University Medical Center to provide women, infants, and children services. RS 2017-891, Virtue and Roten approves an agreement between the uh, Department of Parks and Recreation and the United States Department of Agriculture to cooperate in a wildlife damage management program for all lands under parks control. RS 2017-892, Virtue and Withers approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development to the National Career Advancement Center to establish and carry out infrastructure funding agreement services. RS 2017-893, Virtue and Weathers approves an amendment to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development to the Tennessee State Career Advancement Center to provide reemployment and eligibility assessment services to help unemployment insurance claimants to return to work faster. RS 2017-894, Virtue and Roberts accepts a donation from Music City Incorporated to Metro for the use and benefit of the Nashville Fire Department. RS 2017-895, Virtue and Roberts approves a, an Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant from the United States Department of Justice to the Metro Nashville Police Department for specialized training and equipment to ensure personnel maintain needed certifications for criminal investigation and crime reduction initiatives. RS 2017-896, Council Lady Vircher authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Casey Mercia and the subrogation claim of Allstate Insurance Company against Metro in the amount of $30,000. RS 2017-897, Council Lady Vircher authorizes the Department of Law to compromise and settle the personal injury claim of Asia Smelly against Metro in the amount of $40,000. RS 2017-890, Eight, Council Lady Vircher authorized the Department of Law to compromise and settle the property damage claim of Shar Ferreira Properties Incorporated against Metro in the amount of $56,500. Council Lady Vircher. 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 Council Lady Vircher.
RS 2017 899, Council Lady Vircher authorized the Department of Law to compromise and settle the property damage claim of Vape USA against Metro in the amount of $54,221. RS 2017-901, Kendall, Vircher, and Allen authorizes an amendment to the lease agreement between Metro and Eckerd Corporation. RS 2017-902, Council Lady Vircher supplements substitute resolution number RS 2010-1442 to authorize the ex execution terms, issuance, sale, and payment of water and sewer revenue bonds in an aggregate principal amount of not to exceed $300 million and authorizing the use of available funds for all or a portion of the remaining outstanding water and sewer revenue refunding bonds. RS 2017-903, uh, Council Lady Hurt, O'Connell and others recognize as prominent natural resident, Na resident Nathaniel E. Harris and his historic business, Woodcuts Gallery and Framing. RS 2017-904, Council Lady Karen Johnson recognizes Mr. Benjamin F. Flagg and Mrs. Janora Flagg for 70 years of marriage, operating a successful business for over 60 years and for their contributions to the city of Nashville. RS 2017905, Henderson and Council Lady Mina Johnson recognizes Cheekwood's celebration of Bryant Fleming Day in partnership with Friends of Warner Parks on, their fir on the first Saturday in October. RS 2017906, Councilman Bednay recognizes September 15th through October 15th as Hispanic Heritage Month, month in the city of Nashville. That is the consent agenda. Committee reports, Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval 13-4-0 um, against for resolutions uh, RS 2017, 866, 867, 868, 869, and 870. For resolution, RS 2017, 888, recommended approval for 13, 13 4, 0 against. Resolutions uh, 2017, 891, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 13, 4, 0 against. Uh, resolutions uh, 2017 901 and 902 uh, recommended approval 1340 against. Thank you, Council Lady. Council Lady Gilmore, Health Hospitals, Social Services. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, resolution 2017 888 was recommended for approval 6 4 and 0 against. Now, did you ask for, um, I wasn't clear, 889 or not? I, worked with I just have 888 and, and 890. 890. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, resolution 2017 890, uh, the Health Hospitals and Social Services recommended 6 4 and 0 against. Thank you, Council Lady. The Councilman Roten, Parks, Rec Parks Library and Recreation. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Parks, Library, and Recreation, approved resolution 2017891, eight in favor, zero against, and resolution 2017905, eight in favor, and zero against. Councilman Weathers, personnel. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Personnel, Public Information, Human Relations, and Housing Committee voted to recommend approval of resolution RS 2017-892, and resolution RS 2017 893, six in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, planning, zoning, and historical. Uh, Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, planning, zoning, historical considered resolution RS uh, 2017 866, 867, 868, 869, 870, 885, 886, 887, and uh, RS 2017, 901. Uh, we recommend uh, uh, approve for 13, 4, and 0 against uh, for approval. Thank you, Council Lady. Council Lady Roberts, Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public Safety voted 4 in favor and 0 against on resolutions 894, 895, and 900. All right. Councilman Elrod, Public Works. Public Works recommend approval resolutions um, eight, 10 in favor, zero against resolutions 866, 
through 870, resolutions 884 through 887. Thank you, Councilman. Council Way Haywood, rules confirmation. Thank you, Vice Mayor. The Rules Confirmation and Public Elections Commi Committee, um, we looked at Resolution 903, voted 8-4 and 0 against. Resolution 904, we voted 8-4 and 0 against. Resolution 906, 8-4 and 0 against. And having said that, I move for approval. And um, having been approved by all appropriate committees, I move to adopt the entire consent agenda. If there's a motion to approve the consent agenda, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-865, Councilman Pardew, Vircher, and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for the reimbursement of railroad crossing safety improvements at Baker Station Road. Councilman Pardew. Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, it's my understanding that Public Works is asked to uh, Let's get our committee reports. To defer to, uh, committee reports. Yes, sir. Uh, Councilor Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended an indefinite deferral, 13-4-0 against. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Planning Zoning Histo Historical recommended uh, indefinite deferral, 13-4-0 against. Okay, Councilman Alrod. Public Works recommend definite deferral, 10 in favor, 0 against. Councilman Pardew. Uh, I move well, deferral. This is a motion to defer indefinitely. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-889. Virtue and Gilmore approves a grant from the National Association of County and City Health Officials to the Metro Board of Health to provide programmatic activities to extend, expand partnerships to reduce HIV and other STDs amongst adolescents. Adolescents, Council Lady Virtue. Budget and finance recommend an approval, 13-4-0 against. Uh, Councilor Lee Gilmore. Uh, thank you. Vice Mayor, Health and Hospitals uh, recommended a deferral, 6-4-0 against, and I would like to explain. Floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so all of our members were there, and we have such wonderful discussion, and through our uh, rigorous and in-depth discussion, we learned from Mr. Sharp that the actual a caption of this does not fit what this bill does. So we deferred it until we could work with uh, the um, health department and get a proper caption for it. So that's why we Thank deferred you. it. Thank you. Council mm -hmm. Lee A move for deferral. Motion to defer one meeting is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-900. Roberts, Virtue, and others. Approves a housing incentive grant agreement between Metro and Mikin Development, LLC for the conversion of workforce housing units located at 1211 51st Avenue North. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Mendez. The Ad Hoc Affordable Housing Committee voted to defer this one meeting, 8-0. Council Lady Virtue. Budget and Finance recommended a one meeting deferral, 13-4-0 against. Council Lady Roberts. I'd like to move for um, a deferral for one meeting, please. Motion to defer one meeting. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-907, Withers, Bedney, and others request the second Monday in October to be recognized as Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to move approval. Committee report. Sorry? Brent, Committee report, please. Council Haywood. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, we voted five, four, one against, and two abstentions. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. The floor is yours. Just like to thank everyone for their interest in this resolution. Um, I have uh, filed this resolution. I sent a letter to the council members uh, that hopefully all of you have had a chance to read. Uh, this proposal was brought to me by District 6 constituents, and I have worked with 
um, the Metro Human Relations Commission. I've worked with uh, some Native American and, and Indigenous Peoples groups, some students at local universities. We have kind of worked together on some language proposals of, of what might be included. Uh, not all of those were included in this resolution. Uh, just wanted to clarify that um, this resolution does not replace or cancel Columbus Day. What it is is a recognition of Indigenous Peoples Day. There are um, a lot of uh, impacted groups who uh, were impacted by the colonial enterprise that happened about 500 years ago or so. Uh, and we have a lot of shared history, uh, both here in the United States and in the Caribbean area and in Latin America. And really what this resolution tries to do is to give uh, some of the populations whose cultures had been actively suppressed by governments over uh, historical periods at a time, and in some cases even today, opportunities to uh, celebrate their culture and all of the great things that, that they have to offer, uh, both in those original countries as well as the many of those individuals bring with them here into the city of Nashville that make us such a, a rich and diverse culture here. So those are my reasons for uh, filing this, and I would request everyone's approval. Councilor Ivan Reese. Thank you very much. I uh, co-sponsored this um, uh, for personal reasons. Uh, as both a Tennessean and an Oklahoman, um, with the uh, historic Trail of Tears markings going through District 8 of Oak Old Hickory Boulevard. Uh, my aunt, uh, Betty Bell, uh, served the um, uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs in the state of Oklahoma for several years, and uh, I, I find this uh, issue particularly passionate, and I urge your support. Councilman Bednick. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Well, what can I say? This is... Uh, a long time coming. Uh, I, or, you know, I grew up in Argentina. Uh, we used to celebrate Dia de la Raza. Uh, for people from Latin America, la Raza doesn't mean the race, it means the culture, the background, where we came from, a shared ethnicity. And we used to celebrate El Dia de la Raza on October 12th. Uh, and that was a celebration of uh, the Spanish people coming to Latin America. and. Uh, obliterating and uh, merging and creating a, a new reality for millions of people. Millions of people were disappeared, were killed, uh, were destroyed. Enti entire communities don't exist anymore because of the expansion of uh, European uh, people that were coming to this country. I'm proud of being Latino, I'm proud of my heritage, but I also think that it's impossible to uh, build anything by denying or ignoring or not considering how did we got here. So I'm encouraging you guys to support this legislation. It isn't about Columbus, who by the way, came on three ships that were funded by Spanish and half the sailors were probably Jewish because the Spanish were kicking them out of Spain. So I'm not being anti-Italian or anti-Catholic by condemning uh, or by, by opposing or by, by saying that I want to have recognition of indigenous peoples. So please consider uh, looking at the other side of the coin that makes this thing complete. Uh, it is not about being against how we got here, it's about embracing and trying to understand how we got here so we can build a better future. So thank you. Councilman Scott Davis. Being a son of a Bahamian immigrant, um, that was that that island of Luthera was impacted by um, Christopher Columbus. But more importantly, right now, we want to celebrate the culture of a people that have been forgotten. And I stand as the chair of the Minority Caucus in support of my colleagues that so eloquently portray and defend. Um, our indigenous brothers and sisters, and having a best friend in high school that was a, that is a member of the Lakota Sioux Nation, I applaud my caucus members and thank you, Mr. Withers, thank you, Mr. Bedney, and thank you, Councilor Evan Reese, for those words. And let's move it forward. Councilor Yamina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to also thank you for the uh, lead sponsor for uh, bringing this issue to the uh, floor. Sometimes, you know, try to do the right
right thing is uncomfortable. It make you feel uncomfortable, but sometimes you have to use our, our voice to speak up and you know, speak for the people who did not have a voice. So that's why I am supporting this uh, resolution. So I uh, urge you to support because this is not against the Columbus Day or we are not replacing any day. Just try to kind of speak up and speak out for the people who did not have voice so long. And I appreciate your support. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Madam Clerk, if you'll open the machine. Madam Clerk, if you close the machine, tally the vote. 26 in favor, five against, seven abstain. Motion carries. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I would like to uh, ask for suspension of the rule to introduce uh, the late file resolution. This is to recognize October. We it changed bills, so it cut you off there. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. So late uh, fight resolution is recognize October as a domestic violence uh, awareness month. Is there, is there objection to the suspension of the rules? Seeing none, let me read the caption. Uh, RS 2017-908, a resolution recognizing October 17th, I'm sorry, October 2017 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Uh, Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval. Did we get a committee report? Did the committee review that, Council Lady Haywood? Yes, the committee did review that and we um, voted eight, four, and zero against. Thank you, Council Lady. Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I renew my motion to approve. The motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on introduction and first reading. Without objection, we'll take all those uh, matters together. Council Lady uh, Wiener, did you have one you wanted to pull off first reading? It's on second reading? Okay. So without objection, we'll take all bills on introduction Is that on first reading? He wants to substitute before. We're going to take all bills on introduction and first reading except for our BL 2017 932. Is there a motion to approve? Properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, uh, so let's go to BL 2017 933, 932, Councilman Scott Davis. Request an urban design overlay for 165.21 acres, a property along Cowan Street, Cowan Court, First Street, and Oldham Street. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move the substitute in place of the other bill, please. There's a substitute. It's, there's a motion, a proper second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I'd like to pass the bill as substituted. There's a motion to approve as substituted. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on second reading. Uh, BL 2017-865, Councilman Elrod Freeman and others amends a Metro Code regarding the Department of Public Works reporting requirements. Councilman Elrod. Committee reports, please. You're it. Public Works recommend deferral to the second meeting in December. Ten in favor, zero against, and I so move. Motion to uh, defer to the second meeting in December. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-870, Council Lady Virtue and Allen declares the property at 3410 Knight Road as surplus and authorizes the Director of Public Property to sell the property to Kip Nashville. Council Lady Virtue. 
Thank, thank you, Vice Mayor. Do I need to give the committee report first or move the amendment? Well, let's get the other committee f reports first. Councilman Rosenberg. 870. Thank you, Mr. President. Education voted for the bill as amended. Six in favor, zero against, with one abstention. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Planning Zoning Historical uh, voted as amended, 13 for zero against. Thank you, Council Lady. Council Lady Virtue, let's get your committee report and then you can move the bill. Uh, budget and Finance uh, recommended approval as amended, 13 for zero against, and I'd like to move the amendment. There's a motion to amend, properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, Councilman Rosenberg? Thank you, Mr. President. Which amendment is th are you moving, please? Uh, uh, there was two amendments. Um, we took them up at the same time. Uh, Mr. Jamison, would you, would it be appropriate for Mr. Jamison to articulate it both amendments? Be. First amendment is from Councilman Glover that would uh, dedicate the proceeds from the sale to the school's debt service fund. Uh, the second amendment from Councilman Mendez would essentially apply the right of first refusal and therefore change the exhibit to the agreement so that it reflects the right of first refusal with a condition that it is not applicable to lenders exercising their rights under a deed of trust provided the lender gives us notice of those exercise options. Mr. President, can we take those up separately, please? Sure. So I, I believe, what, Councilor Virtue, which you, you were moving Councilman Glover's amendment first? Yeah, I'm moving Councilman Glover's amendment first. Okay, so let, is that the one you seek recognition on, Councilman Rosenberg? Yes, sir. Okay, so there's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, currently, this land that's in question is being leased to KIPP. Uh, and that, those dollars, those lease dollars are going into Metro Schools budget so that they can use that towards our children's education. Um, and under the bill as filed, that $3.4 million from the sale would go to Metro Schools capital funds so they could use it on the vast array of capital needs that we have. Um, under this amendment, they would not be collecting the rent payments anymore, nor would they be able to use this money for our needs. Um, last year, Metro Schools filed a $278 million capital needs request for year one, and we funded 85 million, leaving them with a $193 million shortfall. By doing this, we're pulling another 3.4 million out of it. Uh, not only that, but we would like them to be efficient with what they're doing with the, the Metro Schools owned land and by doing this, we would be discouraging them from surplusing land in the future, simply because right now they are bringing in dollars that they can use via rent. But if we're saying, if y'all surplus land, we're just gonna put the money towards debt service and you can't use it, that would be a big uh, uh, deterrent to doing that in the future. So I would ask that uh, the council vote no on this amendment. Thank you. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Understand, the taxpayers have already paid for this, okay? So all we're asking them to do is merely put the money back towards debt service. Uh, over the years, from the time I was on the board to the time of now and time before me being on the board, the city has always been extremely generous uh, with our capital dollars and, and what we've given to the schools. I, I don't want to speak on behalf of the administration, but we asked yesterday, did, did the administration, please, are you welcome to answer, did they have a problem with us doing this? and I'll let them answer, but I believe the answer was no, they didn't. This is a way for us to be responsible and to show the taxpayers in Nashville that all we're doing is paying down debt service because we continue to raise and raise and raise and raise the amount of money that we borrow. And we've been extremely generous with the schools. They represent over 40% of our budget. So this is just, this is a very small amount that we're receiving on a sale of a building that this city and this taxpayer base financed already for them for saying, go, let's go ahead and pay down your debt a little bit. That's not a bad thing. So I would ask for you support, uh, your support on this. Thank you. Councilman Mendez, are you on the amendment? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Lady Allen. I am on the amendment. I just wanted a little bit of clarification. When we say pay down the debt service, does that specifically mean it's 
Metro's debt service in general, or, or is there a specific Metro schools. Nashville Public Schools debt service? Schools debt service. So it is it is still staying within the school system payment. It's it's not going back to Metro in general. Right. By charter, we do have to keep it within the schools fund. This would further specify that it's when the schools debt service fund. Okay, which is separate from their capital fund, which is subject to our approval. Right. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Councilman Bedney. Yeah, I have a question for the administration. Uh, so why are we not using this property for affordable housing? I think we had a created a conversation that we were going to use any surplus property to incentivize affordability in the city. How did this become a, a school property? I'm going to come back to you on the bill after the amendment. Oh, I apologize. Thank yes, you. thank you. Councilman Pridemore, are you on the amendment? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yes, sir, I am. Uh, as stated yesterday, I, I echo uh, Councilman uh, Rosenberg's thoughts and statement. Also, we need to consider that, you know, the school board has um, has elected officials that um, that do the same thing we do. I know we approve the funding, but they are also elected officials representing uh, the people of this county for what is best for David, for the schools in Davidson County. Thank you. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. I agree with everything Councilman Pridemore just said. I also note that the administration is does not have an opinion on this particular amendment. They're not, it's not that they don't have a problem with it. They presumably are leaving it to the school board because that's their purview. And I hope we'll do the same. Thank you. Councilman Mendez, change your mind. I did change my mind. Um, well, uh, the administration did say yesterday that they were okay with it. Metro Finance did and had not affirmatively again right now. Um, and I, I see the point uh, that my, my colleagues are making. Um, uh, but um, I think that uh, what Councilman Glover is suggesting, it is a relatively modest amount. I think that we do have the uh, power to um, say how it's going to be applied. And I think us um, demonstrating um, especially um, when we're uh, perhaps approving, I don't know, billions of dollars of funding um, to, to demonstrate that uh, um, when we get capital funds that we use it to retire debt is something that is valuable. So I'm in favor of the amendment. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Madam Clerk, if you'll open the machine. Madam Clerk, if you close the machine, tally the vote. You may need to do it, Marlon. 19 in favor, 19 against. <laughs> Chair votes no. That brings us to this, get back to Council Lady Vercher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I'll go ahead and move the, the second amendment. Mr. Jamison, would you explain the second amendment? Uh, yes, through, I, I would have to give a shout out to Councilman Mendez, who took it upon himself to have some pretty extensive negotiations with Council for KIPP Academy uh, in response to concerns from council members regarding the uh, addition of a right of first refusal. Uh, negotiated with Brooke Smith, I believe, and has a new uh, agreement to be attached as the new Exhibit 2 that includes the right of first refusal that council members are requesting. That's the second amendment. There's a, is there a motion to approve? Properly seconded. Uh, and Councilman Bedney, I'm going to come back to you after the amendment. Um, Councilman Gilmore. Thank you. I was just going to ask uh, if it could be explained a little bit more. Uh, council. Um, uh, Attorney Jamison said it so fast. I was really listening, Sorry. but I, 
One more time, uh, Councilman. Yeah, just and, and so I, I was really listening, but I didn't I didn't catch it. Thank you. Former Councilman James. Former Councilman. Should KIPP decide to sell, Metro would get notice of that first before others have the opportunity, and therefore we could exercise that right if we elected to. Um, if whoever uh, lends money to it has to foreclose, for example, they could proceed with that as long as we are given notice of their intent to foreclose, so we could intervene in that instance as well. No one else seeking recognition on the amendment. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us back to the bill as amended. Council Lee Archer. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval as amended. There's a motion to approve as amended. Councilman Bednick. I'm sorry. It's been properly seconded. Councilman Bednick. Uh, same question. Okay, th this is a, a school property. It was a school that Metro operated as a, as a school, and currently uh, KIPP is using it as a charter school, and the school board um, decided to dispose of the property for the purposes of selling it to KIPP. Yeah, so it's a, it's a school's decision as to, yeah. So have you guys, uh, the... The staff that deals with affordable housing, did they consider this property for affordable housing? I mean, I'm an architect. Well, I have the green architecture. I can build you houses in a school. It doesn't have to be necessarily a school when uh, when you have a property like that. Yeah, it, it is a it is a school property, and they specifically disposed of it to to sell it to Kip Academy to continue to use as a charter school. I have been to Keep Academy. Mm -hmm. They're great. They do a good job. I have no problem with Keep. I have a problem without having enough, uh, enough affordable housing. So that should be our priority. If we dispose of any property, first should be, sorry, in my humble opinion, <laughs> should be to uh, incentivize affordability. So thank you. There is a motion to approve as amended. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. With that objection, Councilman Rosenberg will be marked marked as abstaining unless there's a no vote. Seeing none, Madam Clerk, if you'll mark Councilman Rosenberg as abstaining. BL 2017-904, Allen, O'Connell, and Henderson amends the Metro Code relative to economic and community development incentive grants. Councilor Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports? Councilor Eve Archer. Budget and Finance recommended approval, 13 4 0 against. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move approval with the brief explanation. Or yours. Thank you. Um, this is uh, a, a question that has come up when we do economic incentives. Um, we have, from the floor with each one individually, asked that they uh, try to utilize MTA's um, Easy Ride program, which provides uh, that the owners would then provide. IDs or badges that their, their employees could use to, to participate in on the, riding on the, on the bus. This would simply formalize that process so that with every economic package that we have, this conversation is automatically part of that. So with that, I would ask for your approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? I'm sorry, Councilman Sledge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just had a question of the sponsor. According to the analysis, the second question, the second, uh, I guess, requirement is a, an annual written report regarding participation. My, my question of the sponsor is if the uh, applicant rec, uh, looks at the program, says, no, we're not gonna participate, are they still required to file an annual report and say we have 0% using Easy Ride? I just wanted to understand the mechanics of it. Council Allen, can you offer an explanation? I may, I may defer to Mr. Jameson on that, but my, I would like to be encouraging them to use this. And so if it's a nuisance to them when they don't use it, I'm okay with that. But Mr. Jamieson, maybe you can answer how it officially would work. Literally how it's written, I don't know if this was the sponsor's intent, but literally how it's written, they would write, we have no interest in participating, presumably just the one time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. No one else seeking recognition? recognition. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-905, Council Lady Wiener <coughs> and Councilman O'Connell appends the Metro Code to establish a merit-based grant program. Council Lady Wiener. 
Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to um, get committee reports, if you don't mind. Councilor Virtue. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance uh, recommended approval as amended, 13-4-0 against. So I'd like to move amendment and then move the bill with a brief explanation. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill as amended. Thank Floor you. Um, I will be brief, I promise. Um, among many of the other things that were asked of me when I was working on tweaking the budget process was this one. How do we address our support of nonprofits outside of the operating budget process, and how do we manage accountability, and how do we manage vetting? So this is the culmination of other discussions with finance and administration to fix that problem. This allows us to consider support for nonprofits within specific guidelines, and since we're using taxpayer money for that, if for no other reason, it deserves the escalated examination and accountability. The mayor already had the uh, Community Enhancement Fund grant program discontinued in favor of this merit-based grant program that we'll be adopting. This is gonna allow nonprofits to apply for those funds with measurable benchmarks and standards for accountability. I'll be withdrawing 906 and would appreciate your support of 905, thank you. There's a motion to approve, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-906, Wiener and O'Connell amends the Metro Code to reestablish the Community Enhancement Fund Grant Program. Council Lady Wiener. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Virtue. Budget and Finance recommended withdrawal 13-4-0 against at the request of the sponsor. And I'd like to move to withdraw, please. That bill is withdrawn. BL 2017-907, Councilman Syracuse amends a Metro Code regarding exemptions to the minimum distance requirements for obtaining bureau per permits upon the resolution, up, upon the adoption of a resolution by the Metro Council, Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilor Lee Roberts. Public safety voted for in favor, zero against. Thank you. Move Syracuse. approval with a brief explanation. Floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, this basically gives the uh, same pathway to a brewery uh, that a restaurant or bar does in getting the uh, 100 to foot uh, variance. And so it basically just gives them the, the, the same process. Thank you. Move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Councilman Anthony Davis would like to be recorded as abstaining. Council Thank you, sir. Councilman Bednick. I was just wondering what the beer uh, board said about this legislation. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you. Uh, they are in support. Thank you. No one else seeking recognition. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-908. Councilman Leonardo amends the Metro Code pertaining to the Department of Water and Sewer Services. Councilman Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, committee reports, please. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommend one being deferral, not 10 in favor, zero against. At this time, I'd like to uh, ask it to be deferred one meeting, please. Motion to defer one meeting. It's properly seconded. Councilor Allen. Uh, motion to defer one meeting is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-909, Councilman O'Connell provides the honorary designation of Bridgestone Drive for a portion of Fourth Avenue South. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We have an amendment to move here. Let's get committee reports Oh, first. I'm sorry. Committee Council reports, Virtue. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval as amended, 13-4-0 against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommended approval as amended, 10 in favor, 0 against. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. My apologies there. Uh, I would like to move the amendment, please. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. Floor is yours. Uh, this is, I, I hope most people know, we've got a major new building that is uh, specifically to house Bridgestone downtown. Uh, they wanted an honorary designation of, of streets along there. This is not a, a formal renaming. There will be a little bit of additional signage. This, as amended, uh, offers them the opportunity to have a third sign. We did get uh, it would kind of this approach vetted by the two other major stakeholders in the area, the, both the Nashville Symphony as well as the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum, and I feel uh, pretty comfortable that this uh, honorary designation won't be uh, particularly disruptive to the, to the stretch of fourth in question. Uh, so I'd like to renew my motion to approve. 
Councilor Lee Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm, I'm excited about this this new building coming and the new, the new business and all the people they employ. Uh, back to my a bill about using the MTA Easy Ride program. We've been encouraging them to do that, and I'm not going to hold this over them, but I'm not sure those negotiations have been, been completed. So if there's any way to let them know that we've granted them this favor and we'd appreciate them finishing those negotiations and doing that, that they are a perfect location to ride for their employees to ride the bus. Thank you. I appreciate my colleague from District 18's question uh, along those lines, and I will do everything I can to encourage the uh, the folks who approached me about doing this to conclude those negotiations because I'm in full agreement that that uh, would be a perfect use of Easy Ride. So I, I thank her for her comments. No one else seeking recognition. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-910, Virtual Withers and Allen approves a master telecommunications facility license agree agreement to be used by metropolitan government departments, agencies, boards, and commissions to license their assets and infrastructure to licensees for loca location of telecommunication facilities on them. Council Lady Vercher. There you go. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Withers. The Personnel, Public Information, Human Relations, and Housing Committee recommended approval of the bill uh, 640 against. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Planning Zoning Historical Committee uh, recommended for approval as amended 1340 against. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, Council Lady Virtue. Budget and Finance recommended approval as amended, 13-4-0 against. And I'd like to move the amendment. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill as amended. I'd like to move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-9-11. Poli L. Rodman Allen abandons existing easement rights in the former right of way of property located at 1930 Castleman Drive and to acquire two new sanitary sewer main easements for properties located at 1930 and 2000 Castleman Drive. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, committee reports, please. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Planning zoning historical uh, recommended for approvals 13 4 0 against. Councilman L. Rodman. Public Works recommend approval. Ten in favor, zero against. Councilman Pulley. I would move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on third reading. BL 2017-608, Hager, Roten, and others. Amends, <coughs> excuse me, amends the Metro Code to establish distinct land uses for short-term rental property owner-occupied and short-term rental property non-owner-occupied and establishing a phase out date uh, in year 2021 for short term rental property, not owner occupied. Uh, Councilman Hager, I'm sorry, Councilman Hager. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, we Committee um, report? Committee report? Committee report. Councilor Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, after a lengthy uh, discussion, um, many uh, amendment was introduced. Uh, amendment, uh, public uh, planning, uh, Planning Zoning Historical Committee uh, considered amendment uh, A through F and H and uh, recommended for approval for those amendments 1340 against. And amendment K and amendment L was a withdrawal. Uh, and also uh, amendment. I, I, I apologize. Am amendment JKL uh, was considered and it uh, motion was uh, failed. And so at the end, uh, Planning Zoning Historical uh, recommended uh, bill as amended, 10-4, uh, uh, two against, one not voting. So like I'm sorry, let me... <laughs> Repeat the, the recommendation on the bill amended. Yes, uh, bill as amended, our final recommendation is 10-4, uh, two against, one not voting. Councilman Hager. Aye. 
I'd like to offer these amendments as a substitute with this bill, and I'd ask Mike Jamison, if he would, to go over those amendments. We need a motion first. Motion to approve the amendment. It's a motion to approve which amendment? Amendments um, A through F and H. There's an objection to taking those amendments together. Seeing none, A through F and H, correct? A through F and H. Council, Mr. Jameson, you wanna give a summary of those? Amendment A would <coughs> change the date within the text of the bill to year 2020 instead of 2019, therefore matching the caption. Amendment B would eliminate the term $50 in front of the fee. There would still be a fee, but the exact amount would be set by codes uh, depending on a, a fee study. Amendment C would require the change to be published in a newspaper of general circulation per our code. Amendment D would clarify that permits that are revoked for one year would be revoked for one year from the date of revocation. Amendment E uh, simply makes a grammatical correction. The, the word that is repeated twice, uh, makes that correction. Amendment E makes a correction to a numerical sequence order uh, in subsection seven. And Amendment H uh, would clarify that owner occupied is defined to refer only to natural persons. Move approval of the amendments. There's a motion to approve, it's properly seconded. Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if this is an appropriate time to make a motion to defer this bill. Um, I would like to, to move to defer this bill until the second meeting in December. Is there a second? There's a motion to defer to the second meeting in, in December, you said? It's right. properly seconded. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, so what's, what's the point of order? Can, 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 Mr. We're Rubin. on the amendments, not on the bill. It would be more appropriate when we get on the bill to make the motion to defer. Under the rules, the motion to defer is always in order. Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, so this is, I think, the bill that everybody's been waiting for all night. Uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion on it. Um, so let me first say that um, I certainly appreciate the sponsor's effort on this, and I understand the, uh, the efforts and the, um, and the work that he has done on it, along with the other co-sponsors. Uh, but as the, as the members of the council know, uh, as requested by the vice mayor, uh, the ad hoc committee on regulating short-term rental properties made up of five members um, of the council, including the bill sponsor of 608, uh, has been meeting since the beginning of July to review our current regulations as well as other possible regulations in a hope to come up with a resolution that everyone could live with. Uh, we have heard from uh, neighborhoods short-term rental property owners, the short-term rental property industry, uh, the police department, Department of Codes Enforcement, Post Compliance, which has flown in from San Francisco and spent uh, a day with us, and uh, members of the Board of Zoning Appeals, who um, brought five members and spent over two hours with the committee last Wednesday. Um, I will tell you that the meetings were kept very informal so that people in the audience could participate as well. So we have appreciated the efforts of everyone who attended, including members of the council. Uh, very helpful information, some very good ideas that might be utilized to craft an overall resolution, one that deals with the whole picture, including enforcement, which has always been, in my mind, one of the keys to dealing with this issue. So, there was a reason that this committee was put together. Um, it was designed to carefully study the issues and work at resolution. And that is what the committee has been doing. Uh, whatever happens tonight, uh, what I can say, at least as chairman of the committee, uh, is that we're gonna continue to work on efforts to see if we can keep everyone around the table 
and work on measures that address this issue. I know it's complicated, I know it's difficult, but we are trying. Uh, we are trying to come up with something that works as a resolution. And when I say a resolution, it addresses the whole thing, from everything from permitting to zoning to caps to enforcement. Um, we have host compliance getting ready to send us maybe a, um, lots and lots of unpermitted short-term rental properties that are going to hit the Board of Zoning Appeals. This is a very complicated issue. And that's why it's taken a little longer than we thought. We're working as fast as we can. Uh, and we hopefully will have a bill uh, or an amendment because um, obviously we just passed a bill on first consideration, which is the placeholder bill, to put an overall amendment um, to deal with all these issues. As I said, we have a bill coming. We just passed it on first consideration. Um, what I would say, um, careful how to say this, I was learned a lot through my years in working with government about how these processes are supposed to work and how you put together a committee and the about that I only had four minutes. <laughs> uh, Council Archer. Thank you, Chair Sherman. Thank, thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I'll pick up. Um, as a member of the ad hoc committee, I will ask colleagues to, to support the deferral as well. One, at the charge of my vice mayor, our vice mayor, this committee was formulized. It was formulized so that we can work on this complex matter. All we're asking is for you to allow us um, that time to do such. We don't want the time that we've spent, and we are appreciative in, in, the, in the work and the efforts that the sponsor and the sponsors have done on this legislation, but allow us to do what the vice mayor, our vice mayor, has actually charged us with to do, and that's to come up with a comprehensive solution for this complex matter. I want to also mention, because it has to be said, um, currently there are no type two permits being issued. So a deferral uh, for this legislation um, 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 doesn't hurt anything. Um, no type two permits are being issued because of this pending legislation. But more importantly, um, we have host compliance in place now. Um, we just, this body asks for, for that solution um, as it relates to this matter. The ad hoc committee, we need time to be able to formulize the information that we've received so that we can compile the information and come up with a comprehensive solution. Um, right now, um, as of to date, um, only 74 calls have come in to uh, the short-term rental. Uh, I know it was marketed as a complaint line, but we've spent a million dollars for a hotline. Um, that's what it ultimately is, is boiled down to. As a body, um, it would be prudent upon us to support this deferral, um, come up with a comprehensive plan, so we can demonstrate to the community these tools that we have paid for, a million dollars for this hotline, right? Um, we need time so that we can make sure that all these pieces connect together and we come up with a plan that both um, our neighborhoods and everyone can actually live with. And again, I encourage you to support this deferral at the charge of our vice mayor. Thank you. Councilman Allen. Thank you, Vice Mayor. As, as a member of the committee, I would like to also um, ask for the courtesy of continued time to finish the work that we've begun. Many people attended those meetings, um, I, I think out of respect for the time that they've spent with that with us, um, it, would, it would be appropriate to allow us time to, to finish. I don't think we need an inordinate amount of, uh, of time to do that, but certainly several more meetings would be required to do that. I'd also like to point out that um, I think what we would be shooting for is a proposed bill that addresses the neighborhood concerns, which are which are very important. We do owe the neighborhoods um, the peace and quiet that they're asking for. Um, we do them no favor, though, if we if we pass a bill that then uh, perhaps is uh, overridden by another entity. So I think we need to be very thoughtful in how we do that. Um, I think that there are ways to take the concerns into account um, so that we don't. Uh, produce a piece of paper that doesn't actually get the results that we need, which is to deconcentrate and to get rid of the party houses to allow the 24-7 hotline to, to, uh, to begin to come into a force so that we can see that it, that it is working. So, um, and again, I would, would reemphasize that um, 608 as pending legislation is currently doing what it's meant to do. It will continue to do what it's meant to do. 
um, I believe that if it is passed tonight, that puts us in a different position that will make it difficult for us as the committee to continue to work on our work as it as it is pending now, it is um, it is an excellent tool. It's providing us the breathing space that we needed, um, and I'm grateful to have it in place and would ask that we keep it in place, defer, and, and I will yield my time to Mr. Shulman to suggest how long that deferral would be. Uh, thank you, Council Eddy and Mr. Vice Mayor and the members of the council. Uh, the idea was to defer 608 to the second meeting in December. Um, this bill that's been passed on first consideration, um, we believe will have to go to the Planning Commission, so that's why we are asking for enough time to make sure we get it through. Um, that's the reason to do it. Um, what I'll do is I'll just finish up briefly about what I was going to say at the end of what I was um, getting ready to say, and that is, again, we just passed a bill on first consideration. We believe we may have a resolution that includes all the different parts of it. Um, I've been through this before. It just makes sense to me to, um, to defer 608 tonight um, until everybody has a chance to see what the committee comes up with. Um, again, the committee's been working hard. All the members have been working hard. We've had open discussions with the public. We've taken ideas. The last two meetings, we actually put stuff up on the board looking for solutions. We got them from the neighbors. We got them from short-term rental property owners. We are going to take all that information, and we are going to put it together, and we're going to do our best job, the best job that we can, to come up with something, a resolution that um, will hopefully work for everyone. Thank you. Councilor Henderson. I don't want to be recognized at this time. Um, I, well, actually, I'll, I would. I'll click on you and then. Can I move to table um, the deferral motion, please? Sorry. You, you, you can move. Uh, you can move. Yeah. Technically, you're supposed to do it right at the beginning, but we're going to we're going to give you a, a tiny bit of latitude there since you didn't speak on the merits. If you're, are you moving to the table? I am. There's a motion to table. Uh, a motion to, to table limits discussion but to yourself and Mr. Shulman. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, so I move, uh, uh, I would move this to the table um, because I rise in opposition to the deferral. Um, I think that uh, Bill 608 was unanimously approved by the Planning Commission this spring and by this Council's Planning and Zoning Committee. The Planning Commission found that Type 2 non-owner occupied short-term rentals are not a legitimate accessory use to residentially zoned property, and Type 2 is a primary use and it is a commercial use. You've heard from Councilman Shulman and several Council members that we should defer this bill yet again, but I respectfully disagree, and I do not make that decision lightly. I genuinely respect the work of the ad hoc committee to bring their own bill, and I hope we all remember not to abdicate our legislative responsibilities in fear of what another legislative body might do. This is not as complicated or as difficult as Chair Shulman or uh, uh, Council Lady Birch have asserted. Um, we co-sponsors have researched and read and listened to all sides about issues related to non-owner occupied short-term rentals which is increasingly and adversely affecting neighborhoods all across this county and this country. And we have presented a clear, concise, measured, fair zoning-based bill to phase out type two permitting and only those in residentially zoned areas. So we co-sponsors stated the Planning Commission in spring to listen to both sides till 1 a.m. We all listened to both sides when this bill had its public hearing several months ago. And subsequent to that, we co-sponsors have attended and participated in all the ad hoc STRP committee meetings and having done so, I am all the more convinced that 608 is the best solution to the quality of life challenges that our neighborhoods face and that our codes department is charged to enforce. The, insertion, the assertion that once we get enforcement figured out, we will no longer need to phase out type two, neighbor, um, type two in neighborhoods is false. Enforcement is a red herring. It can be improved, but it will never solve the death to quality of life when commercial hotel businesses are spot zoned into neighborhoods. And 608 is not the vehicle to address those issues. 608 provides the zoning-based clarity that the ad hoc committee bill would need. 
um, to work. And 608 is a major piece of this puzzle, and it does not keep the ad hoc committee from doing their continued work. And with that, that is why I would support moving uh, the deferral motion to the table. Councilman Schumer. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, and I appreciate the council lady's comments. And um, the council lady has been very helpful in, term, in terms of coming to the meetings um, and talking about these things. Um, but just a couple things. Um, so again, we've spent the last three months working on this. And I know a number of other people in this council have done the same thing. It is, um, it is much more difficult than I think people let on to um, when they say that it's pretty easy or it's not that difficult. It is difficult. Again, I'm telling you that the Board of Zoning Appeals was there last week. If host compliance does what it's supposed to, and we find thousands of these things that are not permitted, um, and they start showing up at the Board of Zoning Appeals, I'm not sure how they're going to deal with that. So you're talking about a very complicated issue that we haven't even addressed yet. Um, I think the whole thing is complicated. Enforcement being a red herring, um, I would um, respectfully disagree. Um, many of you sat through budget hearings. You know that the codes department does not have people that work on weekends. They do not have people that work on weeknights. Um, they're not doing it. Uh, I mean, they're, they, we've got a consultant report, but we know they're not doing it. They don't think they're supposed to. Um, it sounds like they have a very few members of the staff that actually do it. We've checked to see how many people actually go out there and check. Um, I believe the answer, and people can correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's two. Um, what we're trying to do is come up with a much better enforcement process. This thing doesn't work if we don't have proper enforcement. One of the things we're looking at is whether we have to move it, what do we do with it, but we have to put some teeth behind it because if you have no teeth behind it, nobody's going to get nobody's going to get the inspections, nobody's going to get the policing of the regulations that we require. Um, I will also tell you this: I mean, in terms of we did talk to codes. Um, Codes, again, I kept the same position. I will say wonderful things about Mr. Bill Herbert, uh, who is doing his best. There's a guy named Robert Osborne who is also doing his best. But we're talking about thousands of these things. This is very complicated and very complex, and it takes a little bit of time. I know people have worked on it before. We are trying to come up with something that works. Let me mention one other thing that gets involved with enforcement, and that is we did talk to the police department. Uh, the police department is getting the calls. They're going to get the calls from host compliance if the original owners don't answer. And the police department, as you know, have a lot of important things they're working on right now, many important things. And they openly said at the meetings that uh, answering noise complaints and how many people are, are out you know, if they are having a party, it's way down on their list. So um, we can call enforcement a red herring, but it's not. That's probably the most, that's probably one of the most important pieces that we've got to come up with. Again, I would ask you uh, not to put our deferral motion to the table. This committee has done a lot of work. We're not that far away. This is very important. And, um, I would ask that you give us a little bit more time so we can finish our work and see if we can come up with resolution. Thank you. Let me explain the procedural posture just so everybody is clear. Uh, Councilman Schulman moved to defer the bill to the second in December, I believe that's correct. Uh, Councilor Lee Henderson has moved to table that motion. So if you do not want the council to vote on the motion to defer, you vote yes on the motion to table. You won't vote with Council Lady Henderson. If you want the, the council to have the opportunity to vote on the motion to defer, you vote no. Any questions? Madam Clerk, if you'll open the machine.
you'll close the machine and tally the vote. Motion carries. Correct. Councilor Amina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, so now, uh, motion to defy is failed. I would like to encourage our colleague to let's go ahead past 608. Because uh, 608 as amended. And, you know, as you heard, we see so many people standing, or rather sitting behind us. Those people stayed with us 1 p.m. Uh, one night in the spring night and again sitting. So yes, we do have some kind of a threat, maybe coming from uh, another legislative body. However, as a district council member, my first and foremost uh, responsibility is to answer my constituent, my neighbors who are asking to please consider give us quality of life and peace by slowly eliminating uh, investment type of uh, short-term rental from only residentially zoned area. So investment type of uh, short-term rental can operate anywhere outside of a residentially zoned area. So we as a neighborhood really value uh, the zoning called residential zoning area. That's the purpose of having a residential zoning, commercial zoning, mixed use zoning, industrial zoning. So I think it's about time for us to honor our neighbors and people who are patiently stand, sitting and standing behind us. So I really encourage you to vote and pass 608. And also, as Council Lady Hanson stated, it does not stop a committee's work. I do have a tremendous respect to the committee's work, and I think they can continue their work to bring better enforcement. So tonight, please, let's pass 608 as amended, and let's continue our work to bring more quality of work and enforcement. And thank you for your support. As a reminder, we are on the motion to amend A through F and H, is that correct? Councilman Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Well, I know the deferral's off the table now, but one of the reasons I removed my bill was to put a moratorium out there for 12 months, and I removed it in good faith because we said that we were gonna let this committee do its work. And so in good faith, we're not doing that. So. Uh, while I may support the amendments, unfortunately now it's going to make me vote no on the bill because I don't think we've done what we said we were going to do. And I regret that because it's going to make it look like I'm not in favor of the neighborhood, and I am. But I'm also in favor of making sure that we, we follow through with what we said we were going to do. So I regret that we're in this position. I think a little more time would have been a prudent uh, move to make, but uh, I appreciate the indulgence, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Council Lady Lee. On the, on the amendments. Um, it was before the, the vote to put it to the table, so I don't have anything to say now. Thank you. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I know you always wanted me to do that when I was on the rules chair. Um, so um, just to let you know, I'm, I'm going to abstain um, from any votes uh, on the amendments on, on the bill. Just, I just needed to say that um, as the chair of the ad hoc committee, we're going to keep trying. Uh, we'll keep going. But um, in, we've been trying to maintain that, that level of um, neutrality so we can hear everybody. So I'm just going to simply abstain from everything else. If I can just, I won't keep saying it, if I can just make sure the clerk knows that I'm standing on all of it. I think everything is going to be on the machine tonight. Mr. Shulman, you'll have a chance. Councilman Hager. Well, I feel like I didn't get to speak about this before, but I appreciate fellow council member bringing the motion to table the deferral. 
This started back in February when I filed this bill, and I've deferred it five times. That's how many times this bill has been deferred. Once it went to the Planning Commission and became pending legislation, then they were not allowed to issue any more of the Type 2 permits. Let me make it very clear. This gets lost in transition. The, type, the bill only does away with Type 2 non-owner occupied in the R and RS district. I've been to every ad hoc meeting, which have been 12 or 13 meetings. I've sit, I've listened, I've heard arguments both ways. And I'm committed to still work with Councilman Shulman on his bill for amendments to this. But at the same time, those amendments will have to probably go back to the Planning Commission. So what I'm asking you to do tonight is pass 608, and then we will continue to work in the ad hoc meeting with Councilman Shulman's bill to produce a bill that will have some amendments to 608, and that's what I'm asking you to do. This is for protection of the neighborhoods and the quality of life that people have in their neighborhoods because, as you've all seen some of the emails and things that are going on, these have been party houses, and people have been calling us, they've been emailing us, and don't get me wrong, I think host compliance is a great program, but it's not gonna solve all the problems. If you go back and look at the paper that I put on your desk, there's about 24, 25 cities across Tennessee that have already disallowed the type two in the residential and the RS districts. So it's quite clear that people are seeing some of the problems that we're having here, and what they're doing is following suit and passing ordinances to disallow type two in the residential neighborhoods. We were elected to protect our neighborhoods. Those are the people that elected us. And this is a phase out program, so the people that have the type two STRs have until June of 2021, based on my amendment, to continue to have their type two, to make sure that they recoup their investments and then they can decide at that point in time, they can either take the property and do it as a long-term rental or they can put the property on the market. I'm asking y'all to pass this bill tonight with these amendments. I've worked very hard with everybody on this bill. I've worked very hard with the ad hoc committee and I'm committed to continuing to do that. So I move for passage as amended. Mayor. It's not amended yet. We, right. haven't, we haven't voted on the amendments, but you've yeah. moved the amendments. It's properly seconded. Is there anybody else who seeks recognition? I've got five other people seeking recognition on the amendments. I'm going to hold you to it, Councilman Weathers. What do you have to say about A through F or H? Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just wanted to say that these amendments that were proposed are housekeeping amendments, uh, and I think they are consistent with the intent of the bill. They do not require re-referral to Planning Commission hearing at which we will have additional multiple hour public hearings that will rehash issues. So these uh, items in the amendments that are proposed are simple housekeeping amendments, and I hope that regardless of your position on the final bill as amended that you would uh, go ahead and apply these amendments uh, at this time. Anyone else seeking recognition on the amendments? Councilor Gilmore. Uh, thank you. Last night I sat in the um, the committee, and so it, it, this speaks directly to the amendments. I will be able to support the amendments, but I will not be able to support the bill. And I do understand that the council member has worked very dil diligently on it, and I shared it with him before. I, do, I don't want him to personalize it, but I do think the bill needs to be worked on more comprehensively. And I know that he has put a lot of time into this. However, uh, I think there's some issues that we brought up last night that are of concern. And I think some of them have to do with how a dadu can be considered owner occupied and a duplex cannot. Um, I think we need to look at the fines. And I also think we need to look at, as Council Member Schumann sh uh, shared, a way to make it where codes uh, monitoring is a little bit longer. So therefore, I do support the amendments, but I cannot support the bill. I think it needs to be worked on more holistically. I'm not going to do it. Anyone else on the amendments? Seeing none. Madam Clerk, if you'll open the machine.
If you'll close the machine and tally the vote. 31 in favor, one against, five abstain. Motion carries. We are now on the bill as amended with A through F and H. Council Lady Weiner. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I had the opportunity, I guess that's what you want to call it, to meet with all of these groups, with the administration, with the finance department, with um, multiple entities that are involved within and outside of the STR industry. We met for about eight weeks, nine weeks, and uh, un unfortunately, um, there were those at the table that would leave our table here and go to the Hill and um, lobby the state to upend the work we were doing at the table. Did that leave me with a pretty bad taste in my mouth? Absolutely. Does it color my choice tonight? No, it doesn't. Because they were doing what they were paid to do. And we are elected to do what we are elected to do to support our constituency. Um, that said, I don't believe in a rush to judgment and I probably would have supported the deferral um, because I think that as Council Lady Gilmore said, we need a comprehensive solution and at this point, we continue to come up with more and more questions and not really all the answers that we need yet. And I support the work that the ad hoc committee is doing. Having said that, um, I want to ask a question and then I, I have a couple of follow-up statements. Mr. Jameson, if we pass 608, will we then have the possibility that we could have thousands or even 10, I don't care how many, STRs, Type 2s, the non-owner occupieds operating without a license, without a permit, underground, if you will, and not paying taxes. Sure. So we're opening the gate, folks, that if we pass 608, we are opening the gate to lose the opportunity to regulate these things. And that's my overarching concern. When I was involved with legislation in the hearing aid industry 25 years ago, we had the same exact thing facing us. We either regulated hearing aid dispensers and audiologists or we didn't. And if we chose not to, they were gonna go do what they wanted to do with no oversight. And I personally don't see this any differently. Because of that, my hope is that we'll take a hard look, allow this ad hoc committee to do their job. I would love to vote a 100% yes on this bill, but for the reasons that I've explained, I will probably abstain. Thank you. Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, first, I want to thank Councilman Hager, uh, Council men Roten, uh, Council Lady uh, Henderson for their work on this. I know they've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this, and the neighborhood groups that, uh, and other folks that have participated in Chairman Shulman's committee, and I appreciate his work on this. Um, and I wish that this would have been held off so that committee could uh, do some more work because I'm uh, afraid that if we pass something tonight, we're gonna send a message to um, the folks up the street at the state capitol um, now, while it just applies to the R and RS districts, they're going to get the message that we are going to be phasing out and banning them in the city of Nashville. And while other cities have done that, I understand that, but they're going to look at it statewide. And we have only three senators out of 33 at the legislature. And the, the bill to, do, to take away what we're doing tonight has already passed the House. It's just a vote or two away from passing out of, the, out of a Senate committee at the state legislature. So I would hope, um, I'll be voting, um, I'll be following Chairman Shulman's uh, leadership on this and abstaining because I don't uh, want to careen towards a, a confrontation with the state without us doing everything we can to see if there's um, areas for compromise. Um, again, Councilman Hager's done a great job with this and worked extremely hard um, and others uh, but I will be abstaining because I want to see that there's uh, more areas for compromise. Thank you. So 
Sorry, Councilor Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I, I appreciate all the work of, that people have put into this. I've I put a fair amount of work into this for about six years now. So um, I am hopeful that we'll, as we have learned, eventually get this right. And I'm confident that eventually we will. And I hope that we will be left alone uh, to put together good rules and to be sure that they are insured. I think um, an important part of having those enforced is having the cooperation of the platforms. Um, in the many conversations that I've had with them, they have stipulated some conditions that would ensure their cooperation and others that would ensure uh, less than cooperation. I am, I will just say right here, regardless of what happens tonight, I'm committed to continuing the process um, to make sure that, that what we end up with protects our neighborhoods, which has always been the goal. Um, certainly it, is not, it has not been achieved at this point, but we've put some important things in place and we will continue to work on those um, but I believe that it's, uh, it's going to be important for the committee uh, to put together something that may make some changes to what passes tonight, and I hope that people will be open to those changes. Um, uh, with the goal, again, being that we can end up with something that achieves what the neighbors behind us are asking, which is to, to protect the quality of their life in their neighborhood, and that's, it's important for us to be able to maintain the ability to do that. Um, I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to do, but I, I think the ultimate goal is for us to um, to take get rid of the party houses, to make sure that the non-permitted properties are not allowed to operate, um, and some of that is beyond our control. And we need we need other entities to be on board with this. So I'm I'm just saying at this point publicly that I'm committed to keep going in the process for as long as it takes to get there. Thank you, Councilman Pardo. Call for question. Madam Clerk, if you'll open the machine. On the question. On the question. Okay. Not on the bill, on the question. Requires two thirds vote. It's just on the previous. This is, Councilman Pardue has called for the question. The machine's not on yet. Um, the that, that obviously didn't work up there, and that's not a motion to approve. The, the, the motion on the floor is the call for the question, which cuts off all debate on the, on the underlying bill as amended. In order for that to carry, it requires a two-thirds vote. Now's your opportunity to cast such a vote. Madam Clerk, if you'll close the motion to the vote. Motion fails. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, as one of the co-sponsors of this bill, uh, I rise to say that I don't think this is an either or. I think this is a both and. And I think that's true for both the work of the ad hoc committee. I think that's also true for our relationship uh, between this legislative body uh, and our friends at the other end of Dederick Street and the General Assembly. Uh, this, this bill basically says what I think Nashvillians have long enjoyed, uh, which is the protection of our zoning code uh, with regard to uses. This bill functionally says and, and returns to the Metro Code the idea that residential zones are for residents. Uh, it doesn't do anything more complicated than that, uh, and I think I don't, I don't believe that anybody that is, a, is listed as a sponsor or that supports the bill uh, believes that this is going to be a panacea, and I believe that we all expect that the work of the ad hoc committee can and should continue because Councilman Schulman is exactly right. This overall issue is very complicated, but I think the interpretation of our zoning code uh, is not particularly complicated. I would also remind my colleagues that the industry that has lobbied hard against this bill did not start their lobbying effort with us. Instead, they started it as a preemptive effort at the state level. Uh, and I think that is, is tough for a lot of people working in this room. And with regard to Council Lady Wiener's uh, assertions that we are opening a gate, the gate is already open. I can pull up any of the platforms right now and demonstrate hundreds of unpermitted 
uh, non-owner occupied properties throughout the city. And these are exactly the kinds of properties that are, are already operating in the shadows and frequently uh, out of area operators that are creating the very problems that all of my neighborhoods in my district have encouraged me to work to more stringently regulate. I think if I look at the correspondence that we've received just in the past 24 hours, the power of the actual residents of Nashville is speaking strongly that 608 is not only important but necessary. And I think that we have demonstrated from the ad hoc committee that their work is also important and necessary. And I, I fully expect that a bill will emerge from that process as well that should work in tandem with 608. And I encourage my colleagues to support it as I will. Thank you. Councilor Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I also wanted to uh, respond to uh, Council Lady Weiner's concerns that in passing 608, uh, this will go, uh, the type twos will go, you know, underground. Um, uh, already, um, there, Councilman O'Connell's point, are hundreds operating unpermitted without paying taxes, and we're paying host compliance to catch those folks. So. We've addressed that, and further, in somewhat of a counterintuitive way, I want to point out to colleagues that 608, um, I, I don't think is a vehicle for most of the enforcement issues that we need to address, but in kind of a major way, it does serve as enforcement because if you live in a residential only zoning neighborhood, and um, once uh, the three-year phase-out is in effect for 608, and you see this sort of operation happening around you, and it is not a type one, it is not a place where you know your neighbor lives um, and uh, can hold their, uh, their occupants or guests accountable in the true spirit of home sharing. If you see that activity, then you know it is a violation. Enforcement done, action clear, action easy, rather than these three um, uh, strikes type situation, which does not work because as we have seen in ad hoc committee, in planning commission hearings, in our public hearing here, a lot of the uh, issues um, that make this uh, a challenge to quality of life are, um, they don't rise to the level of enforceability, frankly, right? It's not necessarily, this is not a knee-jerk reaction to the bad apple, big party houses. Um, you know, over and over, weekend after weekend, having someone in the house next door to you whom you do not know, entering out of the Uber, maybe not even that loud at 2 a.m. and waking up your baby or whatever, those things happen persistently and consistently and will never rise to the level of enforcement. So when colleagues point to or advocates in favor of this point to, oh, well, look on the website, there's not even that many uh, negative uh, reports or enforcement actions. That's because this is death to quality of life by a thousand cuts. Nothing ever rises to the level of three strikes. And thus, with 608 in place, if you see this activity transpiring adjacent to you or on your street, once 608 is in place, then you know that that is a legal activity and it is enforceable in that single moment once reported. So I would just point that out to you that that is another uh, merit of 608, which is a very simple zoning-based bill. I think the work of the ad hoc committee can continue on other enforcement matters but 608 is a key big piece of the puzzle that helps with that overall enforcement as well um, as the zoning. Thank you. Council A. Blaylock. Thank you. I don't rise and speak very much, but with this, I really believe that we should not piecemeal something so important as this. Um, I think the majority of the people here probably are in agreement with what 608 does. You know, we are for the people. We are for, um, you know, probably not having these uh, type twos in residential. However, I believe that a lot of people that are going to vote no tonight are um, just wanting a more, um, I guess, collaborative bill. So I just would ask for you to 
give a couple more months so that we can have something that is actually um, good for everybody and will look good on us from the state. And also, um, I, I just think that this bill is already stopping anything from coming on for no matter how long we defer it. So we should definitely defer it. We have nothing to lose. Councilman Scott Davis. Just as a point of clarification for the folks back at home, um, uh, Mr. Jamison or Mr. Jamison, just for just for clarity for the folks at home, the special ad hoc committee was assigned by this body. Is that correct? By the vice mayor. By the vice mayor. Okay. And Mr. Schulman is the chairman that was assigned to that committee. Is that correct? Correct. And Mr. Schulman, and I don't want to put words in my mouth, the committee still has work to do. Um, that's what was voiced, correct? Correct. I stand to tell the folks at home, let's honor, you know, what this body and the vice mayor asked and let Mr. Schulman finish his work and I stand in support. Thank you. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just wanted to um, say that District 6 now has over 600 short-term rentals um, and of all types. And, uh, until, and, and until very, very recently, District 6 had the most, but I believe that Councilmember O'Connell's District uh, 19 now surpasses mine. But uh, as the district that until very, very recently had the most, I've had the most opportunity to hear from constituents on both sides of this issue. And many of you, my colleagues, uh, have filed bills trying to sort of tweak things with regard to short-term rentals, which has generated uh, a really large amount of correspondence for and against. Um, so I've, I've had a huge amount of constituent engagement and correspondence and conversation on this particular topic. What I am here to tell you is that there is no one bill that will ever be the be all and end all bill. That is not going to happen, whether you vote for six or eight or not, that bill is not going to happen. What Bill 608 does, um, and I'm not a co-sponsor, but the co-sponsors filed it as a zoning bill. It narrowly looks at zoning and land use. We had a multiple hour public hearing on that uh, at the Planning Commission as well as at the uh, Metro Council, as many of you recall. Um, and I want to go back to Councilmember O'Connell's point. The platforms themselves, both here locally in Nashville and in other uh, states, typically are, have been advocating for preemption from the beginning and not for negotiation, and yet we're, we keep being told that you know, we're, we're supposed to try to find this compromise with the platforms, and I'm all for about, about that, but I've been pretty vocal that I have a lot of really good neighbors who are type two owners. Um, I'm not mad at my, my neighbors who are type two owners, but I am frustrated and perhaps even angry at the platforms who are mega corporations, who do this to cities all throughout the world, have all these resources, they could easily have adopted from the beginning, well, we're just not going to list people that don't have permits. That would have been an easy decision for them to do. There were easy steps, if that's what the issue is, that the platforms could have taken from the beginning that would have possibly resolved some of these issues. But rather than having uh, good faith efforts from the platforms to come to Nashville and see what we can work out to maybe address enforcement, we've had efforts from them at preemption. And so I just want to get back to that. There's no be all and end all bill that we're going to have. Um, I really respect Council Member uh, Gilmore and Council Lady uh, Sharon Hurt that spoke yesterday. Let's talk about dead use. 608 is, is neutral on that topic. If this body wants to take up uh, how we treat day uh, dues versus duplexes as owner occupied, I would be more than happy to co-sponsor that bill with anyone in this, and 608 doesn't change that. So again, 608, however you vote for it, um, is does not stop debate on enforcement. It does not stop debate on future amendments. Uh, what it does do that I really do appreciate is it gives people who have permits three years that they can still do that. So for, for those who, like myself, were originally for a moratorium, just to say let's stop issuing these permits until we can get enforcement, uh, underway. That basically is the effect of 608, because we will continue debating this topic 
forever. I mean, I just think that that's, we're, that's a reality that we're in. And at some point, you have to decide for yourselves, how many of your constituents have you heard from on this topic? Where are they at on that topic? And specifically, uh, if they are uh, uh, opposing uh, this bill, if they, you know, are they owners or not? I mean, what I can tell you is that with few exceptions, the people who uh, own type twos want to operate them in perpetuity. And I don't blame them for that. And if we need to have a discussion about grandfathering of existing people, we can still have that conversation. If they need more time, we can talk about that. But at some point, there is a fundamental disagreement about uh, what is the purpose of residential zoning or not. And that is not something that we are gonna ever resolve. Thank you. I'm going to try, I've got people in the queue who have spoken before. I'm going to try and jump around a little bit to people who have not spoken yet. Um, Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have strongly mixed. That was quick. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. He's, he's strongly mixed. Uh, Council lady. <laughs> Go ahead. I have strongly mixed feelings on this. I could make a pretty effective argument, I think, uh, against type twos. Um, but I, I want to make three very quick points. Number one, we've got a committee that's working on things. We've talked about that a lot, and I'd like to see that process play out. The second thing is, I don't think that we should legislate based on what our friends up the street are gonna do, but I think it is important to acknowledge and be deliberate in what we're doing when that's going on. And that's the case because of the third thing, which is this piece of legislation is in effect right now. It's pending legislation, so it's being enforced. If we vote on it tonight and it fails, it's back to square one. And based on that tabling motion earlier, it could be a very close vote. So I think it's risky to vote on the bill tonight and risk it going away and starting the whole thing over with nothing in place because that is, there is that protection in place right now. Uh, so for that reason, I would make a motion to defer the bill as amended to the second meeting in December, please. You'd have to pick a sec. You'd have you can't defer it to the second meeting in December. You can defer it to a different date. The Is that the case? Even though it wasn't amended earlier, when the previous motion was made. I don't know. It was on the bill before it was amended, though. Uh, Mr. Jameson, how do you rule on that? <laughs> If the motion to defer is on a different date, then it is a different motion we would submit and therefore is legitimate if you make it a different date than the second meeting in December. But he's saying that the motion is on the bill as amended, but the prior motion was on the bill prior to being amended. All the more reason it would be a distinct and separate motion. So I need to change the date. You, First yes. meeting in January, please. There's a motion to amend the bill as amended to the first meeting in January. It's properly seconded. Um, anybody seeking recognition on that? Councilman Sledge, you haven't spoken yet, I don't think. Thank you, Ms. Vice Mayor. I move to table the deferral. There you go. Floor is yours. I'm sorry, I guess you somehow you got turned oh, off. There, you. there you go. There you go. Thank, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm moving to table the deferral motion because it's, I think it's, while with all due respect to the, to the sponsor who made the deferral motion, I think it's a different verse of the same song. Um, I wish that this were being currently enforced. Um, I wish that we weren't issuing type twos because we are, they're just not called type twos. What I'm getting right now in my district, which is the third highest of short term rentals is all sorts of ways to work around this, right? My neighbors are sending me pictures of notices where they're getting, they know that the people don't live there because they live there. They're getting the notices, they're getting the letters that say, I'm wishing to do it. They're literally some of these letters are coming in on torn off sheets of paper, um, not even full eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper um, that folks are trying to register as type ones and they're clearly type twos. They're clearly not owner occupied. So to that point, we got more work to do after this regardless. And the important thing about this legislation that the sponsor has worked so hard on is it changes the dynamic. We have been talking a lot about the dynamic between 
our body and the state legislature, but I feel like we haven't fully addressed the dynamic between this legislative body and the actors who have tried time and again, as Councilman O'Connell said, to circumvent the work of this body. And I don't understand why we wouldn't say, nothing we do excludes the work that the committee is doing, and I thank every member of that committee for the work that they're doing. But we have to change the dynamic. We have to change the dynamic to say, there, is, there are certain things that we hold as priorities. And one of those priorities is ensuring that our neighborhoods are remaining neighborhoods. Now I can tell you, and I said on this floor before, my personal experience with the type two, which I think many of you have had as well in this body. And after going to court multiple times, finding our department had issued, had issued permits incorrectly, and then going back again, watching an owner get through one legal loophole after another, and the only way that I was able to find a resolution is quite frankly because Metro was bringing the action against the person. If one of our residents and one of our constituents tries to bring that same action, it's on them a lot of the time. It's on them to keep documentation. It's on them to do all the work. And again, it goes back to dynamics. Right. Why are we putting the dynamic on our residents to govern these type twos. That's our job. And so if we take out this bill, then what we have said is we relinquish voluntarily our ability to govern. And I think that's a terrible precedent. I understand, look, we've done stuff that's got preempted all the time. We had a, <laughs> we had a piece of legislation that was almost unanimous. And what happened? It got preempted immediately. So we know that there's that problem, but what we have to do is say, we've got three months left in the year, this is where we want to start our conversation, and we want to start it with the fact that we're keeping our residential neighborhoods residential, and we do that by passing 608 tonight and continuing the diligent work that this committee and this full body have done, and that is why I would ask that you please vote to, to affirm, to table the deferral motion. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Respectfully, if 608 is not being well enforced tonight, and I have no problem believing that, that's not gonna change tomorrow. Slee, 608 is law right now. It's pending legislation. It's being enforced as well as it's gonna be enforced tomorrow, except we're facing the, op the option of gambling it away if this bill is voted on and passed tonight. In my mind, the most prudent thing to do is not risk gambling away 608, vote against the tabling motion so we can defer the bill, keep it in place, and move on with what comes next. Thank you. Madam Clerk, if you open the machine. Do I need to clarify again? All right. <laughs> There's a motion to defer to the first meeting in January. Um, that has been met by Councilman Sledge with a motion to table uh, that motion. So if you want, you vote yes with Councilman Sledge if you do not want us to vote on the motion to defer. If you want us to have a chance to vote on the motion to defer, you will vote no with Councilman Rosenberg. Madam Clerk, if you'll close the machine, tally the vote. I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, could you repeat that? 18 in favor of the motion to table, 19 against, one abstain. Motion fails. We're on the motion to defer, Councilman Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I just wanna stand and say, because I've, I've heard the argument made on the floor, good faith. Well, in good faith, I removed my moratorium bill. In good faith, I believe the vice mayor when he appointed the, uh, the committee. And in good faith, I want to support that work. And I, th I don't think this is going to change. Uh, I have to agree with, with Councilman Rosenberg. This isn't going to change anything tomorrow. 
uh, by us deferring it, I think we in good faith are saying to the citizens of Nashville and to everybody involved in this discussion that we are honoring what we as a body said we wanted to do. And so therefore, I'm glad this is back up for, uh, for an opportunity. Uh, I respectfully I, I congratulate the vice mayor for giving us the opportunity for us to work it through locally. And I hope we don't squander that away because I want to ask a question of Mr. Jameson, if I may. If we have 608 and something the ad hoc committee comes back with that is in direct conflict, who wins? How, how, how is it decided? Subsequent past there you go, there you go. Oh, I'm good. sorry? Subsequent past bill prevails. It's not letting me turn your, own, turn your mic on there, sir. If an ordinance is passed and then a subsequent ordinance revises that first past ordinance, the subsequent past bill prevails. In other words, Councilman Shulman's bill could reorient 608. Okay, so in, in, in other words, I think that if Councilman Shulman is gonna continue this and he feels like the, the body is close to some type of resolution, uh, I would like to, in good faith, do what we said we were gonna do and allow them to continue, to continue their work. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I say Gilmore. I couldn't, I couldn't get his mic to turn on. Councilman Jamison, we, Mr. Jamison, excuse me. Mr. Jamison, we, we repeat what you said. The question from Councilman Glover was that if 608 passes and then the, the bill being worked on by Councilman Shulman and the committee passes later, which one prevails? And to the extent, well, to any extent that it revises or amends or tweaks what 608 passed, the subsequent bill prevails. Councilman Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I was going to say I stand in support of uh, Council Member Rosenberg's motion to defer in January, and I'll tell you why. It has nothing to do with the state legislature at this point. It has nothing to do with good council member, bad council member, because we have to go beyond that. It has to do more with we are not on the same page, and we've been we've deferred it, we've tabled it, we've ter we've deferred it, we've tabled it for like the last 45 minutes. So at this point, I think for us to at least get close to a win, whether you support 608 or not, it would be best to defer it until January because we've spent 45 minutes. I don't know if you realize it or not, whether, what, no, no matter what side you're on, we can't reach a consensus. So at this point, that's why I stand in support of the deferral in January. I think that we can get closer to a win for everybody. Because at this point, some people are saying they're not going to support 608. We've already showed that we did not support Schumann's uh, bill. So at this point, I think in order to get closer to a win, it won't be perfect, but to get closer to a win for all council members involved, because I think everyone has put hard work into it. The vice mayor is appointed. And I think no matter where you are on either side at this point, emotions are high. We're not thinking clearly at this point. It's getting later. So we should just defer it into January and everybody get all hands on deck. And then when January comes, we go with it and that should be the decision. So I stand in support. I ask you all to as well. If you look at your votes, you can see we're not getting anywhere. So if we want to move the needle a little bit, I think we need to go with January. So I would ask that you support Council Member Rosenberg and you support yourself so we can move on to the next bill. Thank you. Council Lady Angie Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Regarding um, the deferral, I would just remind colleagues in the same spirit of what Councilman Sledge said, that passing 608 does not preclude the committee from coming up with their separate related solutions. And um, I think, in fact, it gives clarity to the work that they are doing. And 608 you know, as amended, housekeeping um, can pass, but, you know, 608 is an, it's, it's not an and or, as Councilman O'Connell said, it's, you know, it's, it's an and, because 608 very simply addresses the zoning piece um, of this puzzle, and 608 is not going to be a vehicle for uh, enforcement, uh, minor enforcement issues and other things because it's a title 17 bill that unanimously passed the planning commission and so um you know 608 can work in concert with the bill that is coming behind for the ad hoc committee um, so i would just remind folks of that thank you i'm going to try and get some members who have not spoken yet who are down on the bottom of the list here i'm sorry councilman mendez 
Thanks, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, Mr. Jamison, I heard uh, uh, Councilman Hager talk about how this has been deferred five times previously, and I wanna make sure that we don't stumble into our indefinite deferral rule. Is there any risk of that? No, because it's a Title 17 bill. We can defer it and defer it and defer it. Okay, thank you. Um, I've, I've, uh, I've, I think I'm driving people crazy because I've committed to literally not decide until I have to press the button um, what I'm gonna do here. Uh, I am torn. Um, if, this, if this thing gets deferred, um, my strong message uh, to the industry platforms that I hope uh, my colleagues uh, join me in is the um, never again. Like, if it gets deferred this time, it will not get deferred again. The industry, as a few, couple people have pointed out, a year ago at this time, absolutely refused to play ball in any way, shape, or form, and just was the voice of no, 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 no. And only after Councilman Hager and others filed this bill did we start getting some hints of cooperation. And my um, feeling is that, and the reason, frankly, I'm not going to the ad hoc committee meetings is because until the industry puts on the table their best offer and the absolute last they're gonna do, then we're gonna keep screwing around in indefinite meetings that go on forever and ever and ever. So I don't know how I'm gonna vote on this yet, um, but I hope that uh, everybody joins me in conveying to the industry that if it gets deferred, um, we will vote on 608 um, uh, as it is next time without ever pushing this off ever again. Um, that's what I wanted to comment on. Thank you. Councilor Lee. Lee. I'm sorry. Uh, Thank you, Vice uh, Mayor. There you go. I'm sorry. Yes, Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I guess I'm kind of new to this, so I'm hearing all of this from the first time, and I get the, com the conversation about you have done it before and you've heard everything before. Actually, I am for this bill because I've heard from a lot of my constituents that talked about it. I've also heard from some constituents that are doing the, the short term and they're doing it right. My thing is, I'm also a process type person. And I have a, if we have had a committee and the committee was supposed to do certain things, I'm saying let them do that. And I do agree with the gentleman just said about if we do defer it, that that's the last time because to me that that gives the committee a chance to do something. So I am speaking in favor of deferring it so hopefully we can get some things. I've heard a lot of people bring up some different problems um, that are happening. Maybe we can get some things in place that will help with those problems and we come out with a much better bill. So I'm standing hoping that it will be deferred. I'm not sure how I'm going to vote for it because I do have people um, who have talked about this bill and, and it, is a, it is a good bill. Something needs to be done, but I think we need to have, have some more information before that is done. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody else on the list has previously spoken, so I'm just going to let the machine pick and pick, pick and choose. We tried to cut them off, Councilman, and, and you, you, you did not prevail, <laughs> if I remember correctly. <laughs> Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I really don't have much more to add than, than what I stated previously. Um, just want to implore my colleagues, allow this committee to do what Vice Mayor charged us with doing. And that's coming up with a comprehensive solution. It's not, um, it's not, it's, it's not an unreasonable uh, request um, to ask for, for this additional time to allow us to do this work. Um, I encourage you, I will be supporting um, um, Councilman Rosenberg's uh, deferral, and I'm asking you to do such also. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Council Amini Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I know everybody's talking about this, a 608 deferral, not to defund, so forth. So let me remind you, this 608, everybody's trying to make it so complicated. It is simple. It's just simple zoning bill. 492, the existing short-term rental bill is more complicated because it has type one, type two, type three. This 608, simply make it owner-occupied or non-owner-occupied. And if it's non-owner-occupied, let's phase out within the next three years from 
or an RS zoning. That's it. Very, very simple. Just try to protect residential zoning area. And this, passing this will not preclude any committee work because the committee work, the bill uh, Council Member Schulman introduced is everything and lot to do with enforcement. Because right now what we are missing is enforcement. And 608 is not enforcement bill. It's simple zoning bill. So let's not, you know, uh, complicate ourselves or let's not confuse ourselves. And if you are not sure how you bought it, and everybody's for residential, everybody's for neighborhood. So you don't have to vote against it. You just simply abstain it. And, you know, let's continue the committee work and make enforcement more fully. So just remember, neighbors want simple, keep, you know, very peaceful, quiet neighborhood in a residential zone. That's what they are signed up for. So neighbors don't want a party house or a mini hotel in your neighbor. So six, passing 608 will give them peace of mind and give us peace of mind as well. And while we are working with uh, Vice Mayor and committee to further enforce quality of life by introducing further amendment or something to offer on top of 608. But just remember, this is simple zoning bill. Owner occupied or non-owner occupied, residential zoning or non-residential zoning. So let's not confuse ourselves and please not defy it. I have 11, 10 other speakers, all of whom have spoken at least once. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, as we look down the agenda, the very next bill is Bill 2017-719. This is a single property bill that has invoked almost as much discussion because it relates to a very similar topic, home-based business. Somehow we've reduced the complicated zoning down to a single property and had a lot of complicated discussion on that. And meanwhile, an extremely deep-pocketed industry has convinced somehow a number of us that despite five to 10,000 people in Nashville, based on the maps we've seen through ad hoc, participating in this get rich quick scheme, that somehow what we are doing through our residential zoning code right now is not enabling home-based business. I would resubmit that 608 is in fact just a zoning bill, that it is not an enforcement bill, and that we will continue to work very closely with the committee that has been established to work on addressing this problem, which will continue even after we've done the work of zoning. So I will not be for deferral. I will be for an up or down vote tonight in an effort to restore the important fabric of our zoning code for residential zones. Thank you. Councilman Friedman, have you spoken yet? Here you go. <laughs> uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm gonna, in the honor of uh, Council Lady Lee, your first night speaking, I thought I'd take the opportunity as well. Um, <laughs> I am adamantly opposed to type twos and type threes in residential areas. But like this body, my neighbors are, are split right down the middle. And so I would ask this body, do you want to sit through another six hour BZA hearing? Do we want to sit through another three hours of uh, <clears throat> public hearing? I understand that Councilman O'Connell is ready to push his chips all in and go for an up or down vote. But if you are not prepared to go all in, I would recommend you vote for a deferral tonight because if it fails, that's what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna sit through those BZAs and sit through those public hearings. So I would recommend for a deferral. Councilman Kendall. What's on the floor? The, the, the deferral. deferral. Okay, there's a motion to defer to the first meeting in, in January. Okay, I, I wanna make the motion to call for the question, but I know if I speak, I can't do it. You're but I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go ahead and speak and there ask somebody else to do that. <laughs> You know, Einstein, I believe it was Albert Einstein said, insanity is defined by keep doing the same thing over and over, getting the same result. 
we keep voting and we keep getting 1918 every time. Uh, so I hope we go ahead and vote and, and, and see where we stand. So uh, whoever wants to call for the question, I encourage you to do that. <laughs> Councilman Hager. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to go back. Hold, hold on. There you go, Councilman Kim. If, if, if there's a concern about what the public thinks we think, I think the public knows that all of us are opposed to these party, these hotel type. I think they know that. I don't think we need to stand here and try to convince our constituents that we are opposed to it. The issue now is how do we, how do we best accomplish what we're trying to accomplish? And from what I've listened to tonight, either way this goes, we're still going to have that opportunity to uh, either amend 608 if we pass it or if we don't pass it and pass the deferral, we've still got this opportunity. And I don't think we have to go back and tell our constituents, well, we deferred it because of this. I think they, they know that we are opposed to these type two and type three uh, STRs. Councilman Hager. Did I push the button? Apparently. I didn't mean to. All right, I'll, Councilman Elrod. I'll make two, I'm just going to make uh, two uh, process uh, uh, comments. One is that if we um, pass 608 tonight, um, yes, it can still be worked on. But um, I think I would imagine that it will be very difficult to undo prohibiting STRPs in residential areas. And which is if I'm like Councilman uh, Kendall and that or excuse me, Councilman Freeman, I don't want them in my neighborhood. I don't want them in my district. I know folks in this room that have them on three sides of them, uh, potentially more. Um, however, I'm worried about that if we uh, make this step that the state will take out of our hands the ability to regulate them the way that we can best do it locally. Um, so if we pass 608 tonight, we can still work on it, but the heart of the matter is the prohibition and the moratorium, excuse me, the phase out in residential areas, and that I do not think will get worked on. So that will be decided tonight if we vote up or down on 608. So that will not be worked on, I imagine, going forward. Second, Council McKendall alluded to, it's 18, 19 both ways. Uh, we're going back and forth. And uh, uh, Mr. Jameson, correct me, but I think we need 20 votes to pass this. Is that right? Incorrect. 21. I'm sorry, 21. So if this bill does not get 21 votes up or down, which I don't know if we have that tonight based on our, our votes, then right now, if we defer it to January, then this moratorium on new permits stays in place. If it goes up for up or down vote tonight and fails, then those immediately come back into effect. And I would imagine there will be a flood of the codes department tomorrow of people applying for short term for type two permits. So that's why I would like for this to be deferred. And I am in favor of the deferral motion so we can keep this process going and keep that moratorium of new permits in place. Thank you. Councilman Scott Davis, stay on subject, sir. I, Previous question. Thank you, sir. They're called the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Motion carries. That brings us on the motion to defer. Madam Clerk, if you'll open the machine. Councilman Withers, I'm pretty sure you want to vote. Madam Clerk, if you'll close the machine, tally the vote. Motion carries. 
BL 2017-719, Councilman Scott Davis, just uh, changes 0.23 acres from R6 to SP zoning for property located at 2407 Brasher Avenue to permit an accessory detached recording studio in addition to all uses permitted by the R6 zoning district. Councilman Scott Davis. Move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. This is, um, this is, uh, uh, disapproved bill. It requires a machine vote. Madam Clerk, if you don't move the machine. I'm sorry. This did you move to defer, sir? No, to vote. Yeah, yeah. You moved to approve. This is a, it's a motion to approve. It's been properly seconded. Yes, ma'am. I know. I'm. I'm. We've had a lot of votes here, so we're going to have to give our. This is Councilman Withers, Councilman Anthony Davis. Madam Clark, if you close the machine, tally vote. I'm sorry, there, yes. there you go. 13 in favor, 20 against. Mo motion fails. B substitute BL 2017-801, Councilman Elrod amends a Metro Code to require a report from the Department of Public Works re regarding obstructions or excavations which close or occupy okay. any portion of the public right-of-way for a period in excess of six months. Councilman, um, Councilman Elrod. I would, uh, I need to move the amendment. Is that correct? I, I move to suspend the rules to take up a. No, well, let's get a committee report first. I think. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Uh, committee reports, please. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance uh, recommended approval as amended 13 4 0 against. Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to suspend the rules to take up a merely a housekeeping amendment to the bill. So I move to suspend the rules for that. Is there objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, you're, um, you're, you can move your amendment. I move to adopt the amendment. There's Merely motion, housekeeping to clarify. There's a motion to amend is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill as amended. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move uh, for approval a brief. Um, Floor yours. A brief uh, description of the bill. Um, this bill would require Public Works to give us a uh, regular report of right of way closures that are for longer than six months. That way we can know um, the. That way we can know them, so I move approval. Motion to approve, properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-853, Councilman Kendall, Council Lady Allen, changes 4.75 acres from R6 to SP zoning for various properties located along 33rd Avenue North, 35th Avenue North, Trevor Street, and Delaware Avenue to permit a maximum of 123 res uh, residential, I'm sorry, 123 multifamily units. Councilman Kendall. The reports, please. Cal uh, Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Planning Zoning Historical Committee voted as amended, uh, 12 for one against. Councilman Kendall. I'd like to move the amendment. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill as amended. I'd like to move the bill as amended with a brief uh, comment. The floor is yours. First of all, I'd like to, we had a healthy, honest, pertinent, thoughtful discussion last night, and several council members as well, some council members, Council Lady Virtue, Councilman Withers, uh, Council Lady Murphy, uh, and others had, had some very thoughtful questions, I think. And I'm <coughs> glad to have had the opportunity to try to explain. I, I was not here for the public hearing. Uh, because I was sick, but um, I did have an opportunity to, to give the chronology of everything that happened in this process. We had a copious number of meetings uh, regarding this with residents. Uh, Council Lady Murphy participated in those, and I understand her position. I think she took a position of no uh, because of the traffic situation on Charlotte which impacts her district, 
But um, I also want to thank uh, Council Lady uh, Allen. She was at the Planning Commission, and she, through her diplomacy and tactfulness, was able to encourage the developer to include 12 affordable housing units in this project, which I'm, I'm very pleased with. So I'm encouraging you to, to vote for this. Thank you. Thank you, Council and Council Lady Murphy. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, as last night, I did voice my opposition to this bill because a number of my constituents have begged me to vote against it. A number of uh, my joining and co-parenting for this area, uh, neighborhood, um, a lot of Mr. Kendall's constituents have begged me and you to vote against this. If you remember the public hearing that was held here that night that um, when, when Council Lady Allen was, was leading the public hearing, you heard from a lot of neighbors who were adamantly against this. They were from this neighborhood. At the public hearing at the Planning Commission, if you look at those addresses, they were not necessarily from this neighborhood. And last night, there were a few misleading statements made um, about the location of this. So I have, as usual, colored in a map for y'all. Um, so you can see my map is the orange and red is, is part of my district how close this is to my district, to Sylvan Park, to Sylvan Heights, to Sylvan Summit, and Charlotte Avenue, and the very few outlets from this extreme density going up on the top of the hill where a dump truck fell over during construction already just a year ago this past September. So I'm gonna ask you to remember how many of the people who live in this neighborhood and have asked you and begged you to vote against this bill and join me in, in voting against it tonight. Thank you. No one else seeking recognition. There's a motion to approve the bill as amended. It's been properly seconded. Madam Clerk, if you would open the machine. I think that's it. If you'll close the machine and tally the vote. 31 in favor, three against, two abstain. Motion carries. BL 2017854, Councilman Scott Davis changes 1.04 acres from RS5 to MUNA zoning for properties located at 1233, 1310, and 1314 Lishie Avenue. Uh, Councilman Scott Davis. Approval. I'm sorry? Okay, let's get a committee, committee report. Council Amenia Johnson. Committee report, please. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, planning zoning Mayor. historical uh, body to approve 1340 against. This motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion, motion carries. We're now on to a whole list of stuff that does not require committee reports. I'm going to try and go relatively fast. If you guys will stick with me and pay attention to your bills. Bill 2017-860, Councilman Cooper, Minza Metro Code, to modify the eligibility requirements for the Blighted Property Grant Program to establish an, an historic preservation grant program. Councilman Cooper. Move for approval, Mr. Is Vice Mayor. Is there an amendment? I think there's an amendment. Oh, uh, move for the amendment. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill as amended. Uh, move to approve. There's a motion to approve. Council Lee Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I had a, a quick question about this eligibility. Is this the same program that's tied for small businesses? Can someone? Okay, it is. So are we allowing now individuals that live in communities to compete with small businesses if they have a historic house? No, it's a separate if you'd use the microphone, please, Mr. Cooper. This creates a new program modeled after the one for the small business that is just for historic preservation. Okay, but they would have to be businesses. They could not be individuals? Uh, yes. Okay. Could we say that publicly, please? I'm told it is only for businesses. Okay. This is a pilot program. The, the funding was appropriated in this past budget. Okay. And I just want to make sure that it is, in fact, for um, businesses and we're not allowing people just because they have 
uh, historic houses to compete with funding that we have for businesses. Thank you. No one else seeking recognition. There's a motion to approve the bill as amended. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-866, Councilman Anthony Davis and Councilman O'Connell amends the Metro Code pertaining to the presence of intoxicating beverages from a distillery on the premises of a permittee. Councilman Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'll move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-867, Councilman Syracuse, Councilman Rosenberg, amends the Metro Code to address the control of excess vegetation. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval, please. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-868, Council Lady Vercher, Council Lady uh, Council Lady Murphy amends the Metro Code regarding the prosecution for repeat violations of the Property Standards Code. Council Lady Vercher. Council Lady Vercher. 867, Council Lady Vercher. Apologize, Vice Mayor. Um, with all committee reports in, I'd like to move uh, with a brief explanation. The floor is yours. Um, this bill simply the, just clarifies the language uh, for our codes department, um, uh, expressing that they do have the authority um, to, to expedite uh, habitual offenders. So I see this as an additional resource for them. Um, I think it'll benefit um, the conversations that we're having also as it relates to short-term rental properties as well. And with that, I renew my motion. This motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-869, Council Lady Virtue, Allen and Van Rees, approves a contract between the Mayor's Office of Economic Opportunity and Empowerment and the United Way of Metro Nashville to provide one-on-one -on -one financial counseling and other financial education activities at no charge to low-income residents. Council Lady Virtue. With all committed reports in, I move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Stick with me, Council Lady Virtue. BL 2017-873, Councilman Hager, Virtue, and others authorized the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for the purposes of the Andrew Jackson Parkway sidewalk improvements. Council Lady Virtue. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-874, Council Lady Roberts, Virtue and others, authorizes the acquisition of certain rights of way, easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for the purposes of the Annex Avenue sidewalk improvements. Council Lady Roberts. Mr. Vice Mayor, I move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-875. 875, Councilman Hastings, Virtue, and others authorizes the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for the purposes of the John Millette Drive sidewalk improvements. Council Lady Hastings, Councilman Hastings, I'm sorry, Councilman, Councilman Hastings. All right, Mr. President, there I'd like go. to, uh, having all committees approved, I'd like to move for approval. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Council Thank you, Councilman. BL 2017-876, Council Lady Dow, Virtue, and others authorized the acquisition of certain, certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for purposes of the Mount View Road sidewalk improvements. Council Lady, Council Lady Dow. Thank you. Just move for approval since all the committee reports are in. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-877. Councilman O'Connell, Elrod, and Allen authorizes Nashville Music Row Hotel on owner LLC to install, construct, and maintain underground encroachments in the right-of-way located at 1 Music Square West. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval, please. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-879. Councilman Withers, Elrod, and Allen abandons... Uh, did I skip one? Huh? Oh. I did? No, he's on 878. Oh, I'm sorry. 878. BL 2017-878, Councilman O'Connell, Elrod, and Allen abandons existing sewer main and easements and accepts a new sewer main, sanitary, sewer manhole, fire, fire hydrant, and easements for property located at 700 4th Avenue North. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval, please. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-879, Councilman Withers, Elrod, and Allen abandons an existing combined sewer line and easements and accepts new combined sewer and water lines, sewer manholes, fire hydrant, and any associated easements for property located at 809 Main Street. Councilman Withers. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. With all committees recommending approval, I would like to request uh, approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-880. Councilman Scott Davis, Elrod and Allen abandons a portion of Richardson Avenue right of way. Councilman Scott Davis. Uh, committee reports, please. Well, they're all in, sir. Move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-881. Councilman Kendall, Elrod and Al Allen abandons a portion of alley number 925 right of way in Eastman. Councilman Kendall. That does not require a report. It does not, sir. All right, I'd move approval. So motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-882, O'Connell, L. Rod, and Allen abandons a portion of Lee Avenue and alley number 114 right of way. Councilman O'Connell. I'm sorry, there you go, sir. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval, please. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'll be very quick. Uh, next Tuesday night here in the Council Chambers at 530, we're going to hear a presentation from Metro Water on the flood preparedness plan. And we're going to begin the discussions of not just the downtown flood wall, but a countywide um, investment in and flood protection infrastructure. So I would ask those that are interested in it, please come and so we can start that, those discussions. I know we have a lot going on between stadium transit and, and other things and short-term rentals, um, but that's an important discussion we need to have. Also, I've asked Mr. Jamison to uh, prepare a timeline of what is required by us by statute. Uh, I know the administration for on transit, the administration is working to get put together their plan, but there's a reason that we haven't gotten the plan yet. So Mr. Jamison, I've asked him to put that, that together and we'll be sending that out soon. So we know why we haven't heard anything yet and what will be the next steps that we have to go through over the next several months. Thank you. Councilman Virtue. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Just want to remind colleagues uh, real quickly um, to make sure that you submit your CIB requests by October 15th. Thank you, Thank Vice you. Mayor. Councilman Bidney. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I want to remind people that the Minority Caucus is having the Hispanic Heritage Month celebration at Salsa on October 12th. You are all invited. This is also a fundraiser for Puerto Rico, so let's show Puerto Rico that Puerto Ricans living in the city that we care about them. Thank you very much. Councilman Scott Davis. Is there a motion to adjourn? Properly seconded. All in favor? We are adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.